Well, hello everyone out there in Twitch. Here I am, RP Gamerist, back for another stream of um, flying uh, around um, coastal British Columbia and the inside passage to Alaska. Friday night, here where I am, about 9 o'clock, exactly 9 o'clock as a matter of fact. I made some changes uh, to my audio uh, settings and added a few bells and whistles over the last couple days, did some testing. Hopefully everything sounds good, uh, especially once we get started on the flight. Um, if anything seems off in terms of audio balance or anything, please let me know. And I will uh, I'll do my best to uh, get that figured out as we fly. Um, on the last stream, we left off at uh, Stewart, British Columbia after flying up the beautiful Portland Canal. And uh, on this stream, we're going to take off from Stewart, still flying in the um, Carbon Savage from Got Friends. And uh, we're going to fly over some mountains for the first part of the stream, just, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes and uh, then we'll start seeing some other scenery as we get on track to head toward Ketchikan. So, with all that out of the way, let's get flying, right? Everybody ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, here we are in Stewart, British Columbia, at the uh, eastern end of Portland Canal where the canal is fed by a couple of rivers. Um, Stewart is right next door to Hyder, Alaska. Uh, the uh, US-Canada border runs directly between the two towns. I've been to both. They're small towns, um, just like you'd expect them to be. Um, aside from the gorgeous setting, I think what they have going for them is some uh, bear viewing opportunities. There's a like a bear viewing platform uh, that draws tourists who come to town here. I've never been there, but I had um, when I worked on small cruise ships. Uh, it's one of the things the passengers did when they came to town here. Well, hello, Pio Boss. I see you there as I drift out of control on the runway not paying attention to my speed in this very light aircraft. Um, we're, you know what? We're just going to forget about the runway and get in the air. And take a look at Navigraph and figure out where we're where we need to be going. Graph doesn't seem to be sinking, so I will just uh, follow the heading that it's giving me. I'm going to fly roughly a heading of 294. I think uh, we'll go over this gentle hump instead of climbing the mountain right here. Let's see if I can if I can get Navigraph to. Uh, show our location, but that's secondary to just enjoying the flight. Oh, hey there, Pio Boss. Nice to see you in the chat. How are you doing today? Like another day of nice scenery here. 
This, uh... Looks like this is a glacial fjord. We're gonna go a little lower, since uh, the fjord... Looks like the track it follows is only a little bit off of our desired heading. I like the low and flow, low and slow flights. see my new um, my new uh, fly live overlay is active it didn't uh, properly pick up my departure and arrival which is I guess that's fine since what it would be Skagway that would come up as the arrival if we did that automatically and extremely unlikely we're gonna end up there today unless I do a 16 or 20 hour stream. I might go a little long today though. We'll see what I feel like after about four hours. Uh, my plan is to get as far as Kaufman Cove, Alaska, which is a very small place, um, and uh, see how I'm feeling once we're there. That is about 200 miles following the flight plan I have set up, but um, I don't really follow the... I use the flight plan, plan as just a guide, preferring to stick to these uh, valleys and uh, valleys and channels. So as long as... Uh, as long as we stay more or less on track, I'm not going to be too picky. That does mean we'll have to uh, turn left in a little bit here. I want to get a close look at what I think is at the end of this uh, valley. I've, I think there's a glacier up here. I think I spied it as we as we were about to overfly the valley. This is why I said I think it's a glacial fjord. It's probably just uh, through this little nook here and around the corner. I think we'll find some kind of a glacier. My plan for today was to start about four hours ago, but I was thwarted again, this time by my own lack of planning. I, um, I decided to finally buy this game instead of just playing the, um, uh, playing it via Xbox Game Pass, so I went to Steam and purchased it and uh, did a reinstall last night and didn't notice, uh, I didn't notice the point where the game told me there wasn't enough room on my, on the selected hard disk, because, um, the drive that I initially chose was my secondary drive. I have a, uh, my, my primary drive is only about 500 gigs. My secondary is two terabytes. And for some reason, when you, uh, when you start the install, it asks, I think Steam asked where I wanted to install, and I chose the larger drive. 
but the game tried to install on the smaller drive, and uh, I guess when I did it yesterday, either either I clicked OK without realizing it, or it timed out and just installed on the smaller drive anyway because I wasn't paying attention. I don't know which. Either one is possible. And so I had about two gigs left over on that drive once it was installed. So I uninstalled it today and then reinstalled. Thankfully the the download went a lot faster today than it did yesterday. Yesterday, um, for some reason I didn't get, well, probably a lot of other people in my house were using the internet at the time. I think I downloaded it sort of during internet prime time. Um, today I, I downloaded during the day and my download speeds were double. Although, when it gets to, down to the last 10% or so, 10 or 15%, it slows way down. So, both last night and today, uh, once I hit, I think, 88 or 90%, um, it slowed down to uh, anywhere from 12 to 25 megabits per second, which uh, just made the whole process drag on. So... I got the install done relatively quickly today, but the other thing I noticed last night is for some reason the Steam version is a lot more taxing on my computer. My um, CPU cores and my GPU run a lot hotter um, on the Steam version. So I spent some time with um, uh, what's it called, throttle stop, um, adjusting settings so that I like to fly low and slow, but not necessarily that slow. Yeah. Adjusting settings and um, adjusting my underclocking and everything uh, to get a good balance of uh, CPU function um, and temperatures and uh, game performance. Um, and that took some time. So that's, uh, that's more or less why I was late. And then I could have started once I was done with that, but by then it was dinner time, so... And now I've talked pretty much the entire time we've been flying this, uh, what's left of this glacier here. It looks like... Uh, looks like a... retreating... an almost melted glacier. Although there's still, obviously, an ice field up here. Our heading has sort of adjusted back in the, the wrong direction now. That's fine. We'll just keep adjusting. We'll just keep adjusting until we get where we're going. No luck yet with Navigraph. Just restart it. Restarted and hope for the best. There we are. Now I got it. Wow, look at this. So this is, um... The Canada, I think in Canada, I don't remember what they call this mountain range in Canada. In Alaska, um, they're no, it's normally just called the Coastal Range. Oh, Pio Boss, you're still back there in Stewart, it looks like. Sorry I took off without you. Honestly, these, uh, these peaks are a little lower than I expected them to be. Which is fine, that way I don't have to push my Savage Carbon too hard to climb them. At this altitude, it seems to perform just fine. 
And honestly, I, I haven't seen any major performance issues. Uh, as a result of high altitudes until maybe 18 or 19,000 feet. get to catch a can I'm planning to change planes as much as I love the savage carbon and it's uh, how light and maneuverable it is I want to fly some float planes up here in uh, southeast Alaska so I'm gonna switch to um, either a Cessna 172 on floats or the Beaver on floats. I'm sort of undecided. I'm a lot more familiar with the Beaver, but the Cessna's faster. I do think I'm better at landing the Beaver, so I may, may go with that just for that one reason. Here we are, about 8,200 feet. I think this is probably our uh, highest altitude that we've hit on this trip. Looks like I'm going to have to refer to Navigraph for our position and turns because of the way I loaded into the sim. It's not following my flight path. It just wants to take me straight to Skagway, which is not what I was going for, obviously. I haven't figured out a way to load in using the flight plan, load in at one of the stops or waypoints, and have the um, plane, uh, have the f flight plan actually be our guide. If I load in at one of the waypoints, um, then it wants to just use that as the departure and Skagway, which is our eventual destination, as the destination for the day and it doesn't show the rest of the flight plan. Um, so the only way that I can reference it uh, is on Navigraph, even though the... Uh, even though um, sometimes the VFR map would be a little more convenient. So if I want the flight plan to show up on the VFR map, um, I have to start the flight over again in Bellingham and slew all the way up to wherever, um, wherever we're starting from that day. Uh, unless I can figure out another way to do it, which I've, I've only researched lightly, but I haven't found a solution yet. So if anybody knows a better way, please uh, share with me. That's okay. For now, we can just enjoy these uh, mountains and valleys. Oh, 
Well, Pyobus, I hope you're uh, able to join me eventually. This looks like up close to the place we can land. I think we can land here. What does everybody else think? We probably don't want to land here at 550 feet per minute, but... If we go a little slower, we should be able to do it. Looks like it's just a nice mountain meadow. And it's slower than that, though. Get a stall right down to the ground. That wasn't so bad after the bounce, although that was bad. Gotta remember to pull that stick all the way back when I land, when I'm, once I'm on the ground and breaking. Okay, let's take a quick look around. Imagine picnicking here. Imagine picnicking here, and then a family of black bears comes upon you. I think I'd be abandoning my picnic, get right back in the plane, and get out of here. There's plenty of food back at Ketchikan. Alright, here we go. Get off the ground again. That was actually a pretty decent little place to land. Once we, um, once we get around this corner, we'll uh, keep heading for our next waypoint. I was hoping maybe this valley would just lead us there, but it doesn't really look like it will, at least not looking at Navigraph. We do a slow climb up this mountain and then probably hit a heading of uh, maybe 265 or 270. It's a nice chance to show off the what the Savage Carbon can do. Vertical speed of 3,100 feet. Holding steady at 93, 94 miles or nine, uh, knots. Uh, slowing down a little bit now. Uh, I don't like to see this stuttering. Five seven. Two five seven will get us right there, it looks like. Look at this. Another glacier. Are you sick of glaciers yet? I hope not, because uh there are lots of them to be found where we're going. See what the weather was like here today. Switch to live weather. By the way, um, apparently it was a little windy. By the way, we left um, Stewart at about 2 p.m. Alaska time. Uh, that's what I had it set for. That way, when we and we'll be right around sunset, and maybe we'll even fly through sunset. 
So I'm using live weather, but uh, I set the time back. A few hours. But, uh, seven hours, as a matter of fact. Okay. Listen to the wind. I love it with the jazz in the background, too. I put together a couple more playlists uh, today. Using epidemic sound. I was really hoping that I'd be able to, uh... I was really hoping that I'd be able to shuffle all the playlists together, but that's not an option with that service, unfortunately. So I might just make one big uh, master playlist uh, instead of, ha you know, or in addition to all the playlists that I have. If I can find a way to merge playlists and such, I haven't explored that so much. Turn a little bit. This valley might take us exactly where we want to go. As a matter of fact, looking at looking at the VR map, I believe it will. Excuse me, the VFR map. As always, I'm not sure how realistic this is. Um, this much snow up here. This time of year. I guess it's October now. So, uh, it's possible. We are at 6,500 feet. I don't remember there being that much snow in the mountains yet in uh, my time uh, in southeast Alaska at this time of year. Obviously, every year is a little different, but I think the sim just has very general ideas of what to, you know, where to put snow, and I've definitely, uh, I've definitely been, uh, well, hello, Pio Boss, you caught up. Good job. I've definitely been to, like, Juno in the sim in the middle of summer, using live weather in July in the mountains around Juno. Up here snowy when I'm 95% certain that the mountains in Juno were not snowy in July of this year. And in fact, I was able to access, uh, like, webcams from around, you know, outdoor webcams from around the town of Juno, a couple of them, and see that there wasn't snow on the mountains. So, the sim seems to just think that it's always snowy in Alaska. Which I think a lot of, uh, a lot of humans believe that too. Ah, you mean chicken. What kind of chicken? How'd you cook it? Hey, <laughs> yeah, right, Pio Boss? <laughs> random spices. Well, I hope you randomly chose spices that work well together. And with chicken. Ooh. 
Is the audio okay, Pio Boss? I did a bunch of recordings before the stream to try to track down my mic clipping problem, but even in the longest one, which was about 25 minutes, it didn't happen once, so I don't know if it's because I fixed it with um, OBS filters or if uh, it just didn't happen during that time. I tried to talk kind of casually like I'm talking now, like I always do while I stream, and I also pulled up a long Reddit thread and read it, um, I read this thread out loud while um, projecting my voice normally and then um, shouting for emphasis at some points. And um, I think my um, compression and noise suppression uh, is, doing it, is doing its job. But we'll see if it lasts the whole stream. If it uh, continues, I'm going to start to worry that maybe it's just my microphone if it keeps to happen uh, tonight and in future streams. And I, I hope that doesn't happen because I really can't afford a new microphone right now. So uh, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. So when we get out of this area, hopefully there won't really be snow anymore. Yeah, that uh, our, our track took us exactly where I wanted it to, following those valleys. This is perfect. Um, we are flying into the beginning of uh, Misty Fjords National Monument right now. And if it's snowy when we get in there, I might turn live weather off and uh, try to add some custom weather to make it look the way it's supposed to look. And by supposed to, I mean Misty Fjords is at its best when it fits its name. Oh, look at this. I'm having Star Wars flashbacks now. funny, I... Somebody has probably converted some, like, made a, a fighter jet skin in this game for an X-Wing fighter. I haven't seen it, but I did see one for a Battlestar Galactica Viper. I played with that for a little bit, and I didn't really enjoy it, so I got rid of it. I thought it would be more fun than it was. But I, I kind of think they just used the base F-18 for it. <laughs> oh, so they weren't just random spices, they were mystery spices. That's even better. That's the thing with chicken, huh? Sometimes it's flavorful on its own, and sometimes it just tastes like... doesn't taste like, like much. Having said that, I'm vegetarian, and I've been vegetarian for a long, long time. So I, I remember what chicken tastes like, I think. Um, but I haven't had it in over 30 years at this point. But it does, it does kind of make me chuckle considering how close to tasteless chicken can be sometimes. Um, People complain about tofu being bland, which it is, it has its own flavor, but it is also, you know, pretty bland. It soaks up flavors a little better than chicken, I think. The, the only thing is, if chicken is better than, the, uh, if the quality of the chicken is better than terrible, then your spices can complement it instead of just making it taste like anything at all. But... Take what I say with a grain of salt. Like I said, it's been over 30 years. In that time when I've eaten meat, it's only been accidentally, like, if I ordered a pizza and they uh, screwed it up and put meat on it. Yeah, and uh, Pio Boss, I think I grew up mostly with the lows of chicken. I grew up in southern Minnesota and... Uh, it was like, I don't know, the land of budget meat, I guess, at the time I was growing up. Now it's better. 
than it was back then, but it doesn't make me want to eat it anymore. Alright, I'm going to change the weather because um, I don't believe that this should be a frozen tundra. Aside from the snow, I think it looks fine. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. There. I'm going to pause it for a second. Actually, I'm going to active pause it for a second while I work out the weather here. Let's get some precipitation. What, what are you doing? Now the sim is adding things that I don't want, and in fact, I'm fairly certain I have turned off. Clouds. Open clouds. Here we go. Too low. Clouds don't do us any good if they're underground. Overcast. Oh, this is getting us somewhere. Let's turn the precipitation down. this for a little bit and see how it rolls. Let's start it again. All right. The colors aren't quite right, but this is closer to the weather I expect in Misty Fjords. You see a fun place to land, Pio Boss. You know the drill. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't expect a water jump there. Just dipped my feet into the water there. Oh, they said the... Well, I hope that, that um, you're right about that and not making it up, because it'd be great if they actually did fix the snow problem. I think for people who haven't been to places like this, um, I think a lot of people just wouldn't think anything of it and wouldn't know the difference, but if you have been there, it's one of those things that is, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it is a little immersion breaking, right? What I would like here is to have it be overcast with um, lighter clouds instead of these dark ones, and then be able to have mist down around ground level. Look at that. Look at the water here. I don't know if it thinks that there should be big swells or what, but that's what it looks like. It looks like they're huge swells. that slow. Yeah, exactly. That's that's my issue right there. And I I have um, 
the Alaska mesh from Orbix, which I was hoping, and I don't remember, I, I know I had the impression that it would um, try to fix the um, snow problem, but I don't remember if it actually made any claims to that effect, or if it was just a hope that I had. It was probably just a hope that I had. This, this thing with the water going sideways and stuff, since I like to fly over water and especially um, like streams and up fjords so much, it's, that's one of my least favorite things about the sim. But I have to fly it up and down like crazy to not go in the water that should be pretty much level. Oh, did you find a landing spot? I can't see it very well with my weather. <laughs> there, that's better. I'm gonna land a little beyond you, I think. Oh, maybe not. Oh. No. Oh, what are you flying there today? I hadn't even looked. Oh. See, I was full stick back on that, and I still went nose over. neighbor. Chicken also make you irrationally angry. We are hoping to come to a point in a few miles here, uh, I think in about eight or ten miles, where we take a left. The channel's gonna kind of fork off and we'll go left and do some exploring on that thing. Why am I going so fast? started stuttering so much. Hopefully the stutter goes away so I don't have to decrease my settings. Kinda of pretty over here. A little meadow out between the channels. Oh, 
land on that little island there. Now I don't have the Kit Fox. That's probably going to be the next plane that I buy, to be honest with you. I just don't have money to spend on planes right now. Just want to stop before the water. Well, that's one way to do it. Looks like the channel kind of opens up. I think that's where we uh, go to the left. No. Is it expensive? How much is it? I th I thought I found. Um, I thought when I looked at the um, the pack from um, uh, I think they're I think it's called Parallel Forty Two. It wasn't that expensive. But maybe I just don't remember it, right? Oh, that noise is rain hitting the canopy. That's funny, I thought that, um, I, I wasn't sure if that was, um, rain or if it was some weird jazz drums, but it's the rain. It's not crash there. Just skim the treetops. rain's less pleasant uh, when you're in a plane than it is when you're on a boat that's only moving like seven or eight miles per hour, that's for sure. A plane jazz concert. You're at one right now. Yeah, from what I've seen and heard about the Kip Fox, um, I'm sure, I'm sure that my perception of the price is just colored by thinking that it sounded reasonable, or or like a good deal or whatever. I mean, it's a nice looking little plane. Sounds like it's fun to fly. Maybe not as light as this, uh, as the Savage Carbon, but, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing all the time. Oh, it looks like I have unlimited fuel on it, didn't realize it. stick with it. climb mountains like this plane can. Honestly, that's, um, that's one of my favorite things about this plane is 
how fast I can climb if I need to. I know, um, We Fly Daily really likes the, uh, the Wilga, which is also a cool little plane, but his complaint about it is that he, uh, is that if, if you have to, uh, make a steep climb, it just can't manage it like this does. I would say so far that the sim doesn't quite do Misty Fjords justice, but um, it doesn't look bad. Oh. Did, we, did I miss our turn? I think I might have missed our turn. It looks like it should be right here. Of course we got here. One, three, five-ish. I think this is where we need to go. So to our left right now, you can barely see over there, is mainland Alaska. And to our right is uh, Revia Gagato Island, um, which, is, uh, which is the island that Ketchikan is on. Ketchikan is uh, known by... Uh, many people as the gateway to southeast Alaska. It's sort of the, the first city you, uh, the first city most people stop at if they're taking the inside passage. The first Alaskan city that most people stop in. We do have one stop planned before Ketchikan. A much smaller place. In fact, it's one of the few um, Indian reservations in Alaska. Most Alaska tribes are organized in uh, what are called native corporations uh, instead of um, instead of having tribal reservations. But this is going to be one of the few. Yeah, the the only time. Oops, sorry about hitting my mic there. The only time Savage Carbon feels like too much par power for me is when I'm taking off. It can uh, be a real handful um, because it wants to it wants to take off so early. Um, it's like ready to jump into the air before you have the airspeed to actually fly, and it's so lightweight with so much weight at the front that it just wants to just wants to spin the tail around and drift all over the place. I think this weather fits the music pretty well, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, right? It just wants to fly. It's a single, single track mind on a small plane.
So how was your day today, Pia Boss? Mine was pretty relaxing. I didn't get out of bed until about noon, which was earlier than I planned. I was up really late last night, um, flying with, uh, Tony of SIDG TV. Um, he, uh, I don't remember if you, I don't think you were here when I did the, um, bonus stream on, uh, like, late Sunday night, were you? Um, flying in Pakistan. I, um, when I was in, uh, the SIDG TV chat the other night, I, uh, suggested that flight from, uh, I think it's G Gilgat to Skardu in Pakistan. Um, a low and slow flight up some mountain valleys. And, um, and, uh, he said to put it in his Discord, and somebody beat me to it, and, uh, I guess he liked the idea when he went and looked at the pictures of the place, because the next, the next night he was flying there. So, um, my sim, uh, install last night finished just in time. He did a three-part flight. He, the first flight was an airliner flight from Karachi to, uh, uh, Karachi to Islamabad, and then, um, then a low and slow flight also up Mountain Valleys, uh, from, uh, I don't think they departed Islamabad, I think they departed another small airport, but from another airport to, um, Gilgat, and then a third low and slow flight from, uh, Gilgat to, um, to Skardu. So it was fun to join. There were... I don't know, about a dozen people in that flight. I'm gonna go over to the left here and hug the shore over here because I think there are some little coves that might be interesting to go into if they're not totally obscured by the weather. I might have to turn the clouds down a little bit. See what it looks like. Looks like there's a small break in the clouds coming up, but I don't know if it's going to make that big of a difference to the visibility. On the other hand, if you fly through southeast Alaska with no rain, you've done it wrong. Fly or boat or whatever. Oh yeah, what have you been flying in the last week? started flying in the sim, I flew almost exclusively airliners. Um, mostly because when I did the tutorials um, for the small planes, um, I was really bad at landing. And um, the airliners uh, are a lot more, um, they seem a lot more, um, forgiving and sort of gracefully forgiving than small planes, and so I just gravitated toward airliners, so, um, I started out flying the A320 more than anything else, just the default A320. Yeah, there's a little cove or passage over here, I want, I'm gonna check this channel out. And a break in the clouds, too. Look at that. We got a... I don't know if they call these... Uh, if they haven't this, used this word for, for these breaks in the clouds anywhere else. But in Alaska, they call them sucker holes. At least in southeast Alaska. Oh, the ATR. How do you like the ATR? One of the YouTubers I follow really loves the ATR and the... Uh, it's, it's pretty highly regarded by some people in his chat. And it's a really cool looking plane. Because of course that, we know that's super important too. 
You don't want to fly a plane that doesn't look cool, right? Just a kiss of the water there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not great with airliners. I, I'm, I'm probably best with the A320. Um, I, at least the uh, the default A320. It's uh, the only one I've really put the time into learning the autopilot on so far. Um, I still don't really know how to like program flights into the uh, flight computer. Uh, but I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna bother learning with that plane because I have the fly-by-wire A320neo and I have the PMDG 737-600 and uh, I was gonna work on the learning the um, 736 this week, uh, this last week, but um, instead I uh, instead, I worked on other stuff for the stream. This is pretty. Although this is... Uh, this channel here is suffering from some of the same, like, um... The same angular turns as one I went through a little while back. And it's stuttering like that one did, too. That's really strange. I wonder if there's, um... I wonder if there's a uh, scenery problem here that's causing me to stutter, which I haven't really done elsewhere. Almost touched that rock. I'm glad I did. Yeah, it stopped for a little bit and that started it up again. Well, there's a waterfall up here, isn't there? Not very well represented in the sim, but there it is. Yeah, this is the Mr. Fjord's I know. Narrow passages of water. Got a few, um, few cliff -y type hills. The landing's in order somewhere here. fast for this landing. Just have to find some ground level enough to take off from. I think this will do. Maybe. I can avoid sliding into the water. That's ridiculous. I might as well have been a helicopter. I think I'm just gonna loop around and loop back onto the left and um, rejoin the main channel back there.
is our first real look at Southeast Alaska here. Glad I chose the route that I did. Going up Portland Canal and then doubling back this way to hit Misty Fjords before we even hit any Alaska towns. I will take a little shortcut over and through these mountains to another uh, another channel that looks promising in terms of uh, in terms of scenery. Whoa, it's windy up here. <laughs> That was a surprise. I should have suspected it though when uh, I should have expected it when I heard the uh, the wind howling. Look at the cloud above us too. But if I climb higher, it gets even windier. Or maybe that was just uh, blowing through uh, one of the valleys between the peaks. Well, at any rate, the, the visibility went to shit, so it's probably better to be up here than down where I was. I can kind of see the outlines of some mountains below me. But here... I know we're at 3,700 feet. That should be fine in this area. And if it's not... That's why I have insurance on my plane. Okay, I can stop climbing now. There's a... Maybe we just flew over a lake. Another lake. More wind. Now it's an interesting flight. It wasn't enough to just be pretty. It has to be windy too. <laughs> Not very good weather. Are you did you turn on similar weather? We're getting buffeted here. take a chance and go even lower. Yeah, it looks like I'm still a little bit above these peaks. If I... If I watch the VFR map a little bit, I can get an idea of where it's safe to go, although some might consider that cheating. Oh yeah, go for it. That's fine. You missed all the important details of my weather. Do you want me to Pull it up so you can see and fly in the same weather. Now, I didn't pay attention to how much I was descending. This might be a little low, although I did manage to find one of the valleys, so I think I'll be okay as long as I stick to it.
So I got my fancy overlay up. Um, now I just need to um, figure out how to get um, get my Twitch bot to uh, be able to access that data so I can add the info command that so many other simmers uh, use. Okay. Let me, um, I'm gonna just get going down this valley here. Oh, it does it. Well, let me, uh, now that I'm in this valley that I wanted to go up, let me pause and uh, figure that out. Alright, I invited you to the group, so um, we'll see if this works. Did you get the invitation? Yeah, I guess I actually was just reading a, a thread of um, multiplayer complaints today, and one of the big ones, uh, one of the more, more vocal people in the thread complained several times that sometimes it takes, like, multiple minutes for invitations to show up. I completely forgot about that until you answered me there. I've just been reading those threads to to see if anybody has um, good answers for dealing with the um, invisibility bug, but nobody does. I mean, everybody says the same things to change servers, to exit the sim and, and restart and all kinds of stuff. and. It's really annoying that you have to resort to those sorts of things just to be able to see the people who are flying with you. I missed a turn to take us out of this valley into the uh, into the next channel over, but I think I think if we climb this mountain here. we climb this mountain here, first we're going to find a lake on the other side, it looks like. Am I going to make it? Oh, this is cutting it close. I'm going to stall. Come on. There, I'm just going to land instead. Oh. I didn't mean to cut the power all the way. Come on, don't roll down the hill. I hope I didn't uh, throw you into a crap. That wasn't the smartest decision I've ever made in the sim. <laughs> but, you should find that valley right over here, I think. Need to go. Yeah, up here at the other end of this lake. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, for a few days it was every group flight I was in. But, um, then. Uh, the flights I was part of yesterday were absolutely fine, no problems at all. So yeah, 
It does seem to be just luck of the draw, and from what I read in the threads, Sobo has pretty much stated publicly that they can't figure it out yet, or they haven't been able to figure it out yet, so something we just have to deal with. All right, we're almost, almost to this channel. a little bit. See what it looks like down at this end. I don't know why the the sim has big wave sounds in here. been back here. Fishbowl or Fishbowl Cove. But I also think it seems a little too big for that. It's kind of hard to tell with the weather. <laughs> oh, now that I'm flying it, it doesn't really seem that big, though. So maybe this is it. A... <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is a troll. It's funny, I hadn't even thought about this place until I started up that narrow um, channel to get into it. And uh, just had a flashback to going up there in the cruise ships I worked on. I love flying low like this over the water. Not that low, though. If I go any lower, my wing's gonna go in. I really don't need to take a swim. Did you get the invitation yet? Try sending again. sent it again. It didn't change the way anything appeared, but maybe the second time's the charm.
been thinking about, um, and when I say I've been thinking about this, it's only been for about a day or two, um, seeing if I can find some, uh, like, t uh, um, speech to text app, uh, that I can use in conjunction with Twitch so that when I'm flying with people in their streams, I don't have to, I don't have to do, um, controls gymnastics in order to be able to talk in their chat. just trim up a little bit. So the plane can help me with my pilot error. For anybody, uh, anybody watching who is uh, curious about where we are and what we're doing, right now we are near Ketchikan, Alaska, we, um, we crossed into Alaska over the mountains just outside of Stuart Heider, uh, right at the beginning of the stream today, um, and I flew over some beautiful mountain scenery and, uh, then joined up with, um, Misty Fjords National Monument. Right now we're just, uh, flying in Misty Fjords a little bit, um, we are probably, I don't know, 15 miles or so, 10 or 15 miles from Ketchikan, Alaska. Um, we'll be headed there eventually today. Once we're done flying around Misty Fjord, we have one more stop. Um, we're just going to turn around at the end of this um, channel here and then head back out to the main uh, channel between the mainland and Revia Gigedo Island and then, um, and then continue our flight. Uh, our series of flights we're doing, um, taking the inside passage all the way to Skagway, Alaska. We're going to have a fair amount of uh, zigzagging and visiting different places um, and flight seeing on the way there. Pio Boss is flying with me right now. If anybody else would like to fly with us, uh, that would be awesome. The more the merrier. Um, you can find me. I'm on the we are going to Skagway eventually, Pio Boss. It's going to be probably at least five or six streams from now. Uh, but Skagway is the end of the Inside Passage, the northern end of the Inside Passage. And then after that, I have some other themed flights planned that will keep us uh, within Southeast Alaska for at least a few more streams after that. Um, but yeah, if anybody anybody's watching who wants to um, join us on our flight today... Um, if you just, uh, pop in, uh, uh, I, th I think the airport code for Ketchikan is P-A-K-T, um, or just, uh, find, find Ketchikan, uh, it might be P, it's either P-A-K-T or P-K-T-N. Most of the Alaska airports I know are E for the region and A for Alaska, but I think there is a little bit of variation. Um, anyway, um, we're just outside of Ketchikan, so if you go to West USA server and look in that general area, you should find us flying around. And um, for Misty Fjords, I added uh, I added a uh, I added some weather, added some clouds and rain to the mix because. I think Misty Fjords is best, best seen with a little mist, and um, I'm not sure if the sim can actually replicate the weather that I wanted, but I got, uh, I got, uh, close enough. Where there are breaks in the clouds, it looks like the Misty Fjords I know. Okay, so it is P-A-K-T that we, uh, that we want to be headed for. I mean, I, th I really think that's the one for, for people to um, come in at if they want to join us um, 
Although I guess they could slew over to us in either spot. Or if you if you find us on the world map, you can just set your departure point near us and it'll start you a few thousand feet up or something like that. Then you just have to fly down to us. I suppose I should start using the proper alphabet, huh? So the, uh... The Ketchikan Airport is gonna be, what, Papa Alpha Kilo Tango. And that's the direction we're generally headed in, although we're not going directly there. We're gonna stop at Annette Island first. And then in Ketchikan, I'm gonna... I don't know if um, Pio's gonna join me in this, but I'm gonna change to a float plane of one sort or another. Once we're out of the Misty Fjords area, I'm gonna change the weather uh, so we can see a little better. Although I do think Misty Fjords has been kind of fun with uh, with this weather. here to our left, but I think we'll just keep on up the channel towards this, uh, towards this person in, uh, F-35. somebody else up? Kenzo, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Misty Fjords. How are things down in your neck of the woods? If you can find time to type. Things are going to open up over here, so maybe you'll be able to hit the keyboard a, a little bit. being memorized, mesmerized by the water here. Now that we're out on a wider channel for a little bit. Uh, 
you know what that looked like. That looked like a landing spot. There we go. Probably coming in a little too fast. We'll see what happens. We know what happens. It's gonna be a go around. Barely. Try that one again. our little rock. We're just flying circles around it. Oh, well, I'm just going to continue on my way. I kind of think it was right off my wing and I was flying circles and couldn't see it because of its spot. No. Here we go. Just flew farther away from it than I thought. Kenzo, you beat me to it. Made it by the skin of my teeth. Lose Pyo Boss. I can only half see you behind the, uh. I don't know if you're behind a mountain or if that's just the weather blocking you from my sight. Looks like you're paused. Or lost your connection or something. Oh, and Kenzo, uh, you were crashed. It's only by a miracle that I managed to land up there. Oh wow, check that out. Put the raindrops on the... This little island. That's cool. than I expected, too. I guess that crash really took Kenzo out. Okay, well, I'm gonna get going again. Actually, I'm gonna take this opportunity for a quick break. I'll be back in about five minutes.
and I'm back. Back and ready for more jazzy flight. I think I have enough room to get off the island here in this direction. Kenzo, I see you flying up there behind us. Here we go. Uh, that was a close one. I accidentally started to take off with full flaps. Gotta remember to clean things up when I land. Okay, here we go. Headed south on our track out of Misty Fjords. Then we're gonna turn a little more west and uh head for a net island. Wow, look at this rain squall I'm heading into. This is going to be awesome. I hope there's some wind in here. Look at that, the uh, slightly golden silver gold tinted sunshine coming through over there things were just a little different it might have a rainbow the wind pelting the canopy again get inside the plane anything in here. I'm gonna fly away from this island beneath me. Just to be on the safe side. It's about Rubia Gagato Island off to the right. Mainland Alaska to the left. Didn't know I was going to get into clouds like this. I, I did get higher than I intended to, though. Slow down a bit. in view of the water where I want to be. Yeah, I it was really uncomfortable, to be honest. And then when I got buffeted by the wind for a little bit, my first thought was, did I start to touch down? And then I looked at my altitude and realized that that was pretty unlikely. a little too close.
guess the uh, Kenzo must have paused when I took that break or something. Or else, or else he crashed in a different place. That's why you don't have your cursor over the, the undocked VFR map while you're flying. Because I was pulling up and just got no response. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the acrobatics of the, uh, or the aerobatics of the uh, Savage Carbon bioboss. I'd offer to do it again, but I don't actually feel like it. Okay, it's pretty much time for us to turn, start turning to the west. There is an island to our right here, a smaller island. I looks like I. Didn't look or couldn't find the name. Kenzo's moving again, and there's Savage Carbon back there, or the Savage Cub, I'm not sure which. I think he flies the Savage Carbon. Oh no? That's cool. I would... On a scale of 1 to 10, I think I'd give this plane like a 3 in a cruise. If I actually, if I was actually sitting in it, I might even give it a lower rating. I mean, it just has no, um, has no assistance for the pilot whatsoever. Alright, in a little while here I'll switch planes to something else. I might even take a quick break and pull out the yoke for the next plane. I don't... It has a, a severe problem, which is um, terrible rudder control, but... Uh, just for realism, and also to give my left hand a break. It's flying with the playing with the stick for too long and constantly making adjustments is... I think I'm... Frankly, I think I just have it up too high. I think it's on my desk when it should be a little lower in order to be ergonomic.
<laughs> I'm sure this plane doesn't have the greatest fuel economy either, but since I reinstalled and missed the um, unlimited fuel setting, I don't have to worry about it. And in fact, even the um, airports we've stopped at where I thought I would maybe be able to get fuel, I could. So that might be for the better. Although I'm sure I'd be able to fuel up at Ketchikan. Ketchikan, Wrangell, Petersburg. Although I don't know, um, you know, I don't have any extensions for that. So unless it's offered as like part of ground services at the airport, um, you know, I can't do it. Even though, obviously, there's tons of airports in southeast Alaska where you'd be able to get fuel in real life. Now that we're out of the, uh, now we're out of Misty Fjords, you gotta give the sim credit for something. There's no lumpy water out of here. up with ATC real quick. So that's not really what I wanted. Go on that island. Just in case this makes it possible for us to get fuel it, yeah. Just in case having ATC contact makes it possible to uh, request fuel when we get there. I doubt it, but... Why am I going so fast? <laughs> That's a good one. Alright, 15 miles to go to Annette Island. That's, what, about seven minutes away, probably. Is it even that far? I don't know. I don't feel like doing math at the moment. And I can't say that math isn't one of my strong suits, because uh, simple math certainly is one of my strong suits. Quick, simple math. I just don't want to do it right now. boss, you just gotta take the math by the horns and tell it who's boss. Oh, did we pick up somebody else? We got limo driver back there. Are they flying with us?
Charlie Foxtrot coming in with the raid. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Hello, raiders. Welcome on in. I'm Derek, also known as RP Gamers. Flying a uh, customized rainy inside passage right now. We're just uh, just south of um, Ketchikan, Alaska. Uh, we just flew through Misty Fjords National Monument in the rain, which I think is the best way to see it. Having been there by boat quite a few times. Um, we're uh, headed to Annette Island here. It has um, the town of Metla Katla on it. It's, uh, I think it's the southernmost town in Alaska. Um, and like I was saying, uh, earlier before you arrived, um, people in southeast Alaska, well, people in Ketchikan, like to call Ketchikan the gateway to Alaska, or the gateway to southeast Alaska. Um, but it's not the first town you you see when you arrive in southeast Alaska by boat, anyway. Of course, most tourists don't stop there. No, it's not. I mean, it is a clever name, but, uh... It actually is descriptive. So how are you doing today? How was your stream? Shout out. My shout out command did not set up correctly. Oh, I'm not familiar with that plane. Uh, the keyboard in the background was. Um, me manually trying to give you a shout out because I don't have any hotkeys set up or anything. Although I guess I could, uh. I don't know. I'm a new streamer, I haven't figured all this out yet. Also, if I weren't hammering away at the keyboards. Oh, the music! Gotcha. Um, I'm using, um, Epidemic Sound for my music. Let me, let me get this song name for you. So this song is called Night Watch. Uh, I think it said it, the, the artist was, uh, Wendy Mancini, but it moved on to the next sh song, and I have it on shuffle, so I'm not positive. But... I thought jazz was going to be a good, uh, a good accompaniment for today's flight. So uh, we started a few streams ago in Bellingham, Washington, um, which is where the Alaska State Ferries dock in Washington when they head to the lower 48 states. And uh, we flew over Vancouver Island, we, uh, we flew over Vancouver, then uh, Victoria and the rest of Vancouver Island. Um, we ducked into a couple uh, scenic inlets in uh, southern British Columbia and then ended in Desolation Sound. Picked up the next day and went from there to um, Bella Bella in British Columbia. Oh, you're a jazz pianist. Nice. Piano is my favorite instrument to listen to. And I have... Um... Oh, I see. You weren't talking about the actual music. Uh, were you talking about the... You were talking about the keyboard propped against the wall. That's just a cheapo beginner uh, electric piano that I picked up and um, practice on very casually. Uh, I took piano lessons when I was a kid, when I was like eight, but they didn't last very long because the, the teacher was just like a neighbor lady down the street who was actually a music teacher, but uh, it turned out that she wasn't cool at all. And um, she was really mean to me, to be honest. and. Uh, I told my mom 
about a couple things she said, and my mom insisted that I just stop taking the lessons. So I did. Which resulted in some verbal abuse from her when I told her. In retrospect, it probably would have, would have been better if my mom had told her I was going to stop. Yeah. And the funny thing is, um... I didn't, like, stop practicing after that because uh, I went to my grandparents' house pretty frequently. And uh, they had... My, my um, dad's family is very musical. Everybody plays multiple instruments. And they had a piano and an electric organ. And so I was there pretty much at least once a week and would sit down and practice for, like, an hour or longer when I went there, but, um, you know, eventually that wasn't the cool thing to do anymore. Um, I was kind of inspired, honestly, by some, I didn't mean to get airborne again. I was kind of inspired by some, uh, pianists I saw on Twitch. Um, oops. Always a danger in this plane, and I'm still terrible at mitigating it. Um, yeah, I was, uh, sort of inspired to get the piano and start, uh, practicing a little bit by some pianists I saw on Twitch, um, a couple, uh, Russian pianists, uh, who, who are pretty good, and, uh, yeah, that's one way to stop, and I use it pretty frequently, you'll see. Uh, yeah, a couple of Russian pianists, and also, um, a pianist who I think is somewhere, uh, in Colorado, um, her name is Waffles, and she is awesome. If you've never seen her, she's not on very often right now because I think she broke her wrist and it's still, um, it's still rehabilitating. She did a couple streams a while back and I, I think maybe it was too much pain for her or something like that. So, um, yeah. But anyway, be on the lookout for her. She's really good. She, uh, she's very engaging with chat, which is, that's the kind of streamer I like, uh, somebody who likes to chat. Now that I'm on the ground... Charlie... Trying to give you a shout out, and it tells me the channel you're shouting out does not exist. That darn it worked. It didn't work until I. I must have. Oh, did one go out earlier? It. It. To me, it looked like it didn't. I just got an error message. So. All right, well, now you got another. I'm still learning this. Um, anyway, this is a net island. Um, it is uh, one of the few um, one of the few uh, native reservations in Alaska because while there are a lot of uh, a lot of Alaska native communities, um, the Alaska State's Constitution um, has set up uh, something I don't fully understand. It's called Native Corporations. And so most of the Alaska Native communities are organized into these Native Corporations instead of being tribal reservations like um, most people down south here would expect. So um, uh, I've been here a few times. It's a, a nice small town. Um, uh, a nice place to walk around. Uh, not a whole lot going on. A few stores. Um, I think they. I think folks who live here go to Ketchikan for a lot of the things that they need. Um, Ketchikan is one of the larger towns in Alaska. In fact, I believe it's the fourth largest city in Alaska, with 
the burgeoning population of 14,000. Uh, anyway, we'll get off the ground again here and uh, start to look at the scenery. I'm going to adjust the weather. Don't tell the FAA about my uh, off-runway uh, takeoff there, please. Um, I'm going to adjust the weather because I want a better view of the scenery, especially um, in a little while when we get closer to uh, sunset. It's a live weather. I don't want the live weather, that's for sure. Okay, this will do. We'll just go with sunshine for a while and maybe we'll add a few more clouds later. Um, but yeah, I, I want to catch the sunset while we're flying. <laughs> Schrodinger's runway. <laughs> well, that's going to be even more true uh, when we depart Ketchikan in a different plane. I'm going to hop into a float plane. I haven't chosen, I haven't decided yet uh, between um, uh, between the beaver and the um, skyhawk on floats. I'm, I think I'm going to go with the beaver because I'm more familiar with it, even though the uh, skyhawk is a little faster and more maneuverable. Um, I was going to say that we're not planning to go over any mountains anyway, but that's not quite true. I'll just have to be cautious. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I actually, in 2008, I did a walking and hitchhiking trip uh, along to from um, Washington to Minnesota. I'm originally from southern Minnesota. And my... My intended um, destination was uh, Norfolk, uh, Virginia. Um, so I, I, I was going to uh, I was going to take two. Well, and I actually I followed my plan until I got to Minnesota, which was two through most of North Dakota and then duck south. And um, when I uh, when I crossed the border and crossed the river into Minnesota, I. Um, I uh, ducked down onto 10 and um, took that to um, took that to, uh, to near my mom's place. My mom lives near Brainerd, Minnesota. Um, and then uh, from there, I don't remember my exact route. I, I, I kind of lost track of my route within Minnesota because I the the reason I didn't finish the trip is I spent so much time at my mom's place and then my dad's place and they live like 250 miles apart that eventually um, I knew if I took off I was going to encounter winter weather um, when I got down into like Ohio if not before and I just didn't want to deal with that which is why I didn't continue yeah I'll stop into your um, channel sometime and uh check out your series because it sounds pretty cool to me. Alright, I just gave you a follow so I can stop in sometime. Yeah, I have a bunch of series planned. This one um, is going to be, I don't know, probably six or seven more streams before we get to catch a can. And from there we're going to do um, we're going to do some more flying within Southeast Alaska. I have some I have some uh, I have a few ideas for themed flights here in southeast and from there i don't know if uh we might do a quick airliner trip from juno to anchorage and then hop back into smaller planes for um for like a one stream prince william sound trip uh i i'm not sure i'm just um i chose uh i chose uh, southeast alaska and the inside passage to fly because uh, for my first uh, like stream series because I'm familiar with it. I spent a lot of time there. I love the area and I have experiences that I can talk about. So instead of having to, you know, try to think of things or manufacture things to talk about on stream, um, so I'm not sitting here silently, um, 
things just naturally come to mind because I've spent so much time here. So, yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite places in the world. I haven't been there since uh, 2016, though, unfortunately. Uh, and I didn't realize it had been that long until I started the until I started to stream it last Saturday. But I have, uh, once, once we're done with Alaska, I have a, a few other ideas for um, themed flights. Uh, I, I have to keep brainstorming, though, and in my, um, in my Discord, I've got a, uh, I've got a channel for flight requests and suggestions and theme ideas and stuff. Yeah, right? Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I'm doing some research for this trip to have, uh, especially once we get a little farther north. I've, I've researched some things um, that I wasn't sure about, um, but on top of that, I'm still like adding a little more to the stream each time and and stuff like that. And just uh, being so new. I just want to improve it a little bit each stream, just uh, baby steps kind of. So I added some chatbot commands to this stream, although the, the sh I, maybe the shout out that I did worked. It, it gave me an error message. I can't remember what it said. That first one that I tried, um, maybe it worked and uh, the error message was the result of something else. As you say, you saw a shadow. But yeah, I, I love this sim and uh, checking out new places and also visiting places I've been before. I really enjoy the feeling of nostalgia and uh, it's really cool to... Um, it's really cool to uh, have something like this that can actually bring that sense about, even though it's artificial, it's, like, close enough to the real thing. If only they could add the smells of Southeast Alaska to this. Are you a real pilot? You are. What do you fly? should probably ask people, do you fly real planes rather than are you a real pilot? <laughs> Alright, the island that we're flying over right now is Gravina Island. Um, it's the island that the Ketchikan, Ketchikan Airport here is on. 172's and Archers. Nice. Um, yeah, this is Gravina Island. Uh, this channel that's right ahead of us here is the Tongass Narrows. And then directly across from us, in fact, we'll uh, go fly over the waterfront there. Directly across from us um, is Revia Gigato Island. Oh, here come the stutters. My CPU is not even working that hard right now. Um, that's Revia Gagato Island directly ahead of us with uh, the city of Ketchikan nestled along the shoreline here. This is, uh, like I said, um, Ketchikan calls itself the gateway to southeast Alaska. Um, when I lived in this uh, area, I lived about 100 miles north in Petersburg, um, and I really did not like Ketchikan when I visited it. So there's um, some cruise ships underwater. It's the big cruise ship dock here. And then after that we have a cannery. 
Um, yeah, I didn't. I really didn't like Ketchikan. It's it's very touristy and sort of dirty, but in a charming Alaskan sense. It's hard for me to put words to it. Um, but um, my nickname for it, which always got uh, other folks in the area to chuckle, was it's the armpit of Southeast Alaska. Now I wouldn't be so crude as to call it that, but it's something I can still laugh about. I hope nobody watching right now is from Ketchikan. <laughs> Last time I was in Ketchikan, I found a new favorite bartender just because of the way she handled creeps in her bar. She had the Alaska no-nonsense attitude. So we're going to land at um, Ketchikan International airport over here and we're gonna take a quick break and then come back in a float plane and I think we'll probably start near um, Murphy's Point behind us there I'm gonna make a very irregular landing here I was wondering if we'd uh, if we'd maybe see uh somebody flying one of the Alaska Airlines flights through here. Sometimes when I stop in Petersburg, there'll be somebody flying uh, one of the scheduled Alaska Airlines flights through there. That's always kind of fun. In fact, uh, the other day I I pulled up next to their plane and got some nice screenshots of the, uh, with the Savage Carbon right next to them. Alright, Charlie, thanks again for the raid. Thanks for stopping in and chatting. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'll be sure to come and say hi in your stream after your hiatus. Um, sounds really interesting, sounds like something I'd really enjoy. There we go, it's the Savage Carbon Drift. Enjoy the rest of your night and have a good wake up tomorrow. I'll talk to you next time. All right, uh, Kenzo and Pio Boss, I see you're still with me. Um, I am going to go uh, go out and grab the beaver and uh, come back in, and I'm going to respawn. I think the world map is going to show us a uh, float plane base um, over there uh, by Murphy's Point where we were... Uh... What am I doing? Where we were looking before. Um, for anybody, uh, anybody watching who would like to uh, join us, um, yeah. iCout code here in Ketchikan is uh, P A K T. Um, I'm RP Gamerous in the Sim as well, so uh, we're on the West uh, West uh, USA West server, so you should be able to find us pretty easily. Yeah, here we go. Um, there's a float plane base, the Peninsula Point 9C0 pullout seaplane base. Um, I think I am not gonna start at the base. I'm going to start at the runway here. That is my departure. Uh, get out of here as fast as I can so we don't have to 
listen to the music conflict for too long between the game and my music. Just to hop into the beaver. It's not very fast, it's not very maneuverable, but it'll get us where we want to go. And I'm going to put the uh, Kenmore Air livery on it. Just because I lived in Seattle for a while and there's a Kenmore Air Base there. That's not going to uh, keep our flight plan loaded, but that's all right. We don't need that. We've got Navigraph. All right, Charlie, if you're still here, see you around. Thanks a lot again for coming in. Murphy's pull out. I'm sure some uh, I'm sure some jokes have been made about that name. Okay, Kenzo, I see you back there, Pio Boss. Switching planes. I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit and see if anybody else, see if Kenzo follows along, if Pio Boss comes back in, or if anybody else joins. flown this plane in a little bit and my water landings can be just as rough as my bush landings so let's see all right Pio boss there you are tri motor what is that unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to see it since I don't have it time when I was uh, coming through here when I worked on small cruise ships a ship lost all power right around this area it was not a fun experience fortunately we were going pretty slow already so we didn't have to drop anchor or anything. It would have been very inconvenient. Oh yeah, I think I have seen that. Uh, <laughs> where'd you pick that up? Is that in the marketplace? I'm just going to wait a little bit and see if Kenzo comes back in with another plane, or maybe he'll come back in and come back in with the same plane and just start over us here. And like I said, if anybody else wants to join, uh, we're near... Uh, PAKT uh, Ketchikan International Airport. There's um, 
you'll see the uh, Peninsula Point uh, seaplane base just south of, or north of the airport. And that's about where we're at right now. Listening to the non-existent waves of Microsoft Flight Simulator's waters. This song is clearly inspired by one of the iconic uh, big band songs, huh? Uh, I, I was not, uh, I don't think I was in uh, the sim yet then, so I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have seen it, I guess. Kenzo, hello. All right. There's three of us. We'll wait just a little bit longer in case somebody else wants to join up. So how does it fly, Pyo? I think we're gonna get into the air here. If anybody else wants to join, they can find us via the world map or uh, start up here in Ketchikan and slew in. So um, we get going. Our initial course is gonna be um, loosely 288, I believe. Um, we're gonna head over to Thorn Bay. Enzo, I'll try to not, uh, I'll try not to clobber you on my way out. Uh, it's so much smoother than taking off in the Skyhawk. When I take off in the float version of the Skyhawk, um, once I approach 40 knots, it just bounces like crazy, and, uh, I have not figured out how to mitigate it. I've tried, a uh, slight, um, back pressure on the stick to try to, like, get a step up, and it, it doesn't seem to work for me. But also real tough to not bounce it on landing. This plane's a bit more forgiving. But there are some sacrifices there. It's slower, it's not as maneuverable. 
but it's still fun. I think this has a max speed of like 109 knots. Which I'm at right now. So, um, our first couple stops here are places I have not been to. They're small places that, uh... They're small places that have local residents, but they don't get a lot of traffic. They get... They probably get some fishermen, um... stopping in once in a while in the summer. Uh, I bet they probably have some, like, sport fishing lodges. But, um... The cruise ships that I worked on didn't stop there. Uh, I don't know that there was anything there to attract the, the folks who cruised with us. They're on Prince of Wales Island, which is one of the larger islands in southeast Alaska, if not the largest. Uh, it's been so long since I was there and immersed in the uh, place and the culture that I don't remember for sure which island is the largest. Kenzo decided to take a little break before uh, joining us on the flight. there to the right um, we're looking at like just to the behind us and to the right that's the like northwest tip of R Revilla Gigedo Island um, up ahead on the right is the mainland and then up ahead on the left is Prince of Wales Island this other island sort of directly ahead of us I don't um, I don't know what that island is. Ancient malfunction engine cannot take off. Oh no. I'm sure you can find an aircraft mechanic there in Ketchikan to take care of it. You just might have to uh, swim to shore or something to uh, or call for a tow. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll still be here. Or at least I will. I've got a... I got an hour and a half, maybe a little longer. See how I'm feeling once I hit uh, 2 o'clock my time. Or 1 o'clock my time. Maybe that indicates that I should just plan to go till 2. Uh, I'm gonna need some stretches again in a little while here, and maybe a snack. Especially if I'm going to keep going later. Once we get closer to the shore on the other side, well actually let's just fly over that way now and we can fly along the shore. It's just more fun that way, I think. was, uh, I stopped into We Fly Daily's stream last night, um, and he was, uh, yeah, you'll definitely find us a little further on. We're gonna, we're gonna land 
in Thorn Bay, so that'll slow us down a little bit. Um, if you, uh, we'll be getting close, after Thorn Bay, we'll be starting to get close to Wrangell. We'll have one more stop before Wrangell. And Wrangell is, uh, what, P-A-W-G? I think that's right. Oh yeah, anyway, I was saying I uh, stopped into We Fly Daily's stream last night, and he was flying um, off the coast of Iceland, and he had got the, um, uh, he had gotten an Orbix mesh for Iceland, um, I can't remember what it was called, uh, it might come to me, I'm sure it would be real easy to find, and it had whales in it, that was really cool, saw, um, saw a humpback breach, and I guess they had seen orcas earlier. I was, uh, sad that I didn't make it earlier to their stream, but, uh, I wasn't able to fly at that point anyways because I was reinstalling the sim, so I just sat there kind of jealous of them. I, I wouldn't have seen it anyways since I don't have the overlay, but, you know, he, he was excited enough to call attention to it. I would have looked away, probably crashed while I was watching whales on Twitch. cockpit of this plane in a while. Oh yeah, that's why I like this plane. All the gauges. I don't have to look at this electronic stuff over here if I don't want to. I can just pretend it's not there. In fact, I think this is the result of a mod that I have, and I don't know if I actually like it. I might have to go, uh, remove that mod from the community folder and uh, and not use it unless I come to a point where I decide I really want it. Well hello there Ragnar. I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Welcome in. We just left uh, Ketchikan, Alaska a little bit ago. We're headed to the small town of uh, Thorn Bay. I've never been there. I'm curious to see what it looks like in the sim. it back there in the chat it shouldn't be it should be just just a few messages back uh the closest uh airport is P papa alpha kilo tango e-a-k-t that's right yeah yeah that's right just if you want some help finding us trying to land yet. I 
make some small trim adjustments there though. That's uh, what happens when I'm trying to pull back on the stick with my index finger while I hit the trim button with my pinky. Not that I need an excuse to unintentionally touch down in this sim. Looks like I lost my connection with Navigraph. It thinks I went up the wrong bay. Just restart it and see if it fixes the problem. That's the second time tonight my Navigraph connection has dropped. And it would be mostly fine, I think I... I think I can... I mean, I know I can find the places I want to go with without the aid of the charts. Even if I took out the airport markers. Um, I really just want Navigraph to help me remember place names. position back. Oh, thanks for the follow, Ragnar. Oh, did it? Ah, I don't know. Computers are a mystery to me. A series of wires and tubes or whatever just like uh, uh, was it Dick Cheney who described the internet that way Oops. I better gain some altitude here because I'm not really down here to be nearly landing at every opportunity Oh, hey, Smipes. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Let's see if my shout-out works this time. Got some work done? Great. Hey everybody, if you're into um, film or music, Smipes is a great guy to follow. You can catch him online um, adding, uh, adding effects to films, doing his, his real job while he is on Twitch. Unlike yours truly, the fake pilot. Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I got a later start than I planned today because uh, I had to um, reinstall the sim for the second time in two days. Um, but I took advantage of that time and educated myself about some things. The shout-out worked then? Thanks. I couldn't tell. It doesn't, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, it doesn't show up in my chat. But it didn't give me an error like the... Um, somebody else raided me earlier, and uh, when I tried the shout-out, it, it gave me an error, and then I tried, instead of using the bot command, I tried the regular chat command, and that gave me a different error, and then I finally got it to work. But, um... He said that it worked the first time, too, so... 
Apparently it was just some bullshit error. Yeah, the, um, while I waited for the sim to reinstall again, I added some bot commands and I worked on my um, playlists a little bit, started a couple additional playlists, um, and uh, tried to learn a little bit more about how the, um, how the uh, service I'm using, I'm using Epidemic Sound, Try to learn a bit, little bit more about how that worked. Messaged a YouTube creator to see if I can include their videos once in a while. I um, think I want to see if uh, I can use their videos, or I asked if I could use their videos specifically for my like be right back screens when I take a 10 minute break or whatever. So got some stuff done. Also did some cleaning. So. I was productive in my real life, too. Now, if I had actually cooked some real food, that would have made it an even better day. I'll do that tomorrow. Alright, we're getting close to Thorn Bay here. Yeah, Snipes, we're just uh, flying southeast Alaska right now. We left Ketchikan a few minutes ago. Um, we were flying uh, bush planes until we got to catch a can, and then uh, we switched over to these float planes for a different experience. Oh, it's off to the left there, I think. This is it right over here. I almost went by it, and then I spied these buildings. Is this indeed the spot, Thorn Bay? I think it is. Anyway, this is kind of my happy place here, Southeast Alaska. We, uh, more or less started the stream by taking a little trip through Misty Fjords National Monument. Uh, I had the weather different for that. I set the weather to rain and A little bit of uh, wind. Maybe I don't want to land in this narrow channel. <laughs> I think we want to be leveled. <laughs> Only a little choppy. Now, did I actually go to Thorn Bay? That's the question. I saw buildings, I swear. Are you gonna stream today, Smipes? Looks like I didn't go quite far enough after I landed. Oh, I'm just gonna pop back into the air for a little bit. And have another fun landing, hopefully. Come on. There we go. That must be the building that I saw. I thought I saw some more. So, is this a dock beneath me here? Yeah, there's a building down there. It's just uh, flat, not rendered well. go. I think it's down here. 
Yeah, that looks like a little town on the water. Let's see if I can have a slightly smoother landing this time. Too bad. I'll take it. As long as my passengers didn't throw up, I'm happy. This doesn't look too bad. i to hang out here for a little bit. These buildings are actually up on pilings on the water. When we get to Petersburg, I'll see how the the buildings that are on pilings look there. This tiny house here. I think that's one of those tiny houses that you can buy for like a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Nah, there's a lot of those tiny houses in, in southeast Alaska. I'm just gonna cruise by all these buildings here before we take off, get a good look. And then later I might see if I can find actual photographs of uh, Thorn Bay. Hmm. Um, my water rudder is here to be useless. I'm gonna get stuck in this cove. You know, I'm gonna lower my landing gear just in case I need them here. Look at that. I'm on land now. I think that strategy paid off. Probably the smartest thing I've done all day. Lower them again so I'm not getting all that drag. See you over there. There's a dock I can go right over because we know it's going to be underwater. shoreline a little bit longer here and then we can depart for Kaufman Cove to the north. Our uh, general course coming out of here is going to be around 315 once we get in the air. Oops, I just ran over a dock. All right. I'm gonna spin, well, I'll just take off in this direction, I guess. Take off flaps. Kenzo, I'm coming your direction. Not bad, way 
better than it would have been in a Skyhawk. I'm just gonna fly over the land here and uh, back out over the water. Like uh, maybe a clear cut down there. <laughs> he got stuck in the mud. <laughs> you need a toe. Creek. Uh, creek. <laughs> That's not the Alaskan way. In a small town in southeast Alaska, they would stop and ask if he wanted help. Or at least if they could call somebody. At least that's my experience. Then they'd go tell the whole town about it. Not only that, it would be the main topic of conversation at church the next Sunday. Lake down there. Yeah, these small towns, they sure do. Most of these towns have more churches than bars, I think. That's probably not true of Ketchikan, but it's definitely true of uh, the places of, of uh, Petersburg where I lived, and I'm pretty sure it's also true of Wrangell and probably Sitka too. And then there's the people who um, spend, for whom bar the bar is church. Let's put it that way. That's more my style, to be honest. I don't know if it's still the case, but uh, the last time I was in Alaska, which was 2016, um, it was still up to, um, it was still up to, um, towns and boroughs to, uh, decide whether to institute smoking bans. And a, a borough in Alaska is, like, what the rest of us would call a county, except they're huge. They're way bigger than any county would be. Um, 
And so some some boroughs had smoking bans and others didn't. And I went to um I went to Sitka, which has a an old old locals bar, super divey, called the Pioneer Bar, also known as the P Bar. And um, I was really excited to go there. I hadn't been there in years. And I opened the door to walk in and inhaled. And I had to turn around and, and walk out and, like, steal myself to go in because the smoke was so thick. But I really just wanted to go in there and get fish and chips. <laughs> Joke was on me. They were out of fish and I had to settle for tater tots. Not that tater tots is really settling. I love tater tots. It's just not what I was looking for. I had one beer in my tater tots and left and then I smelled like the cigarette smoke of the bar for days. Normally cigarette smoke doesn't bother me that much if it's just a few people are at a party or something, but that place was like a smoke machine. A Peter tub. I think maybe. Maybe you misheard something I said. Or maybe I misspoke. That's entirely possible, too. Oh, tater tots. Tater tots. Oh, do you not have tater tots down there? You probably just have a different name for them. They're um, a, a potato product that is um, like cylinder shaped. Uh, it's like chopped, tiny chopped up pieces of potatoes kind of mashed together into a little cylinder. Um, and, and then... Um, they're best fried, but uh, a lot of people bake them. And they're great. It's a wonderful form to eat potatoes in. But it's not fish and chips. I bet you have them and just have a different word for them. Here there's some, like, natural brands that try to make, uh, try to make something like them, and they call them, like, Tater puffs and stuff like that. Potato cakes. Are those like um, latkes? Um, like a pancake, kind of? Or are they uh, something different, like a hash brown? Because here we, um, we've got hash browns, which are shredded potatoes um, that you, like, fry up and uh, real hash browns real hash browns um, don't come in a patty form but you can buy um, supermarket hash browns that do come in a patty that's like about the size of a burger, like a small burger but I don't know if that's the same as your potato cakes or if, if any of those are the same as your potato cakes or really similar side view. There we go. Did you just buzz me, Ragnar? A battered potato pancake. Is it, like, deep fried then? That sounds really good. Sounds like one of those things that would be delicious with an egg on top. Or, it sounds like it would be really good with, uh, 
Just a nice piece of white fish. I'd eat that with cod. That would maybe come close to satisfying my fish and chips craving. Look at this. Just is I hope 80 knots isn't boring the rest of you. I'm loving it. It's a superfood. Can you get those at Macca's? Not at Macca's. I don't even know what you can get the, uh, at McDonald's here anymore. I. I haven't been to a McDonald's in so long. I used to, um, I used to use McDonald's uh, for their bathrooms, but then more and more McDonald's that I tried to do that in um, had like either a door code or somebody actually watching to make sure people didn't come in just to use the bathroom. So, uh, so I stopped that. But I've. I should mention I'm vegetarian, so there's not a lot of McDonald's that I would want, even if I really enjoyed that type of food anymore. I, f I find I like that um, type of food a lot better if I make it at home. Also, um, I don't know about there, but I, I think here McDonald's isn't cheap anymore like it used to be, you know? They uh, had to start paying like relatively decent wages, and uh, their prices went up. Beautiful. Oh, little plane in the trees. You didn't see a thing. A toasty is a toasty just um, like toasted bread, or is it like uh, some kind of a small sandwich? or something completely different. I don't think you'd get anything at McDonald's here for three bucks. I don't know. Maybe you could still get a small fries for three bucks, or like the smallest of their drinks. I'm not sure. I don't know. I just have friends who complain about it. Postman. Now you're losing the loops. Yeah, pay attention to the flying once in a while, I guess. Now you're losing me. I think I know some of the lingo, but not all of it. Wow, you get that for three bucks? I mean, even for seniors, that's a, that's a deal. You know, uh, what qualifies as a senior there? I'm getting close. I must be. And come down there for... Toasties and cappuccinos for three bucks. If I eat enough of them, it'll offset the cost of the flight. <laughs> Ragnar, I think you beat us to Kaufman Cove, didn't you? I think you're pretty much right there. 
65, uh, I have a little while to wait yet. I turn 50 in uh, about a month. A month and a couple days. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, checking out the cove. I actually, um, it's funny how often I have, like, talked about these places but never been to them. I used to do, um, when I lived in Petersburg, um, I had a regular radio show at the local public radio station. Ah, here we go, Kaufman Cove, folks. Um, the public radio station there, KFSK Petersburg. Um, Wednesday nights from, uh, nine i think it was from 10 to midnight yeah wednesday nights from 10 to midnight um the uh that was the uh the late night show there every night it was called radio free petersburg very uh clever name i know um and i could play pretty much any music that i wanted so i uh mostly subjected the small town of Petersburg, Alaska to my taste in pop punk. Every once in a while I threw some other stuff in. I generated a lot of complaints from locals who didn't like my music. They had a complaint log that, oops, that we had to keep. And every time I went in to do my show, I would look at the log and every time there was another complaint, if not more, about my show since the last week. They didn't care though. They knew that it was just because people didn't, uh, you know, didn't like the music, but there were lots of other radio shows for those people to listen to, so, um, it didn't have any impact on me. Only once did somebody call while I was there and actually express their dislike of the music to me, and I just said, thanks for calling, I'll put it in the log. <laughs> but anyway, um, Every hour, I think it was every hour, at the very least, at the beginning of my show, I had to read the weather. I think I did, I think I read the weather at the beginning of my show, and again at midnight, or at a few minutes to midnight. Um, and these places were always mentioned in the weather. I think um, most of the town is maybe up on this, up on the bluff here, um, above where we can see, or maybe it really is just this small. Probably is this small. It's cool though. I'd come here on a boat and hang out for a little bit. Nay, nineteen eighty four. All right. Nay, dix-neuf quatre-vingt-quatre. There you go, my terrible French for the night. All right, Kaufman Cove. Have you all seen enough? I think I'm ready to get back in the air. I might fly over real quick just to see what I might have missed from the water. Here, um, this water doesn't ice over in the winter. Um, the uh, salt content is too high. And um, also, it's I think the water is just too big. In the winter here, it doesn't get super cold. Um, it, uh, it gets cold enough to snow, um, but then it... Oh yeah, there is more here. Cool. It's cold enough to snow, but typically it snows and then it warms up and rains on top of it and turns it all into a gross, mushy mess. So uh, the lakes probably ice over somewhat, but I don't know if um, if they if the ice gets thick enough that I would be comfortable even walking on them, you know.
Uh, I just lost Pio Boss. I don't know if you're still there, Pio Boss, but you, either you uh, left or you uh, we've fallen victim to the invisibility bug. All right, now um, departing Hoffman Cove and route to Wrangell, Alaska. Like three, two, one or so is what we're shooting for. Oh no. <laughs> Heading of one zero is um, approximately what we want. now, but when I was living up there, Wrangell's population was around a thousand, between a thousand and fifteen hundred, I want to say. More like a thousand. But that might just be the number that locals told me that was several decades old. This island uh, off to the right here, fairly large island called Edelin Island. I don't know of any communities on that island. I wouldn't even buy it on the ferry. And uh, only on the other side. I don't think we ever cruised this side uh, on the cruise ships I worked on. deckhand on small cruise ships, Kenzo. Uh, and by small, I mean that they were, um, depending on the ship, I think the, the smallest one I worked on was about 140, I think it was 143 feet. Carried 75 to 80 passengers. Um, and the largest one I worked on was 207 feet. Um, I worked, I worked on two, they were sister ships, and they were both pretty much the same length. Um, and they carried a maximum of 102 passengers. So I did a lot of cleaning, painting, and maintenance in addition to line handling when we tied up the ships and anchor detail. I swabbed a lot of decks, is what I did. And, uh... Most of my time was spent in southeast Alaska here. Although I did a few of what they call shoulder seasons, um, which are like sh shorter seasons in different places outside of the main itineraries, kind of where they want to keep the ships running and make money instead of um, just put them at a dock where they're not going to make any money. and. Uh, those shoulder seasons were like the first one I did was actually just um, southern and central, um, like the southern and central British Columbia coast, and then um, down to um, the Columbia and Snake Rivers in uh, Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Um, going up, there are a, there's a series of uh, I think seven locks and dams on the Columbia River, and then some more on the Snake River. And we'd go up and go through all those locks and dams, which were an attraction in themselves, 
And um, also, the, at certain places, the passengers would get off the ship and visit the um, wine country in um, uh, Washington. The Columbia Valley is uh, one of the um, like uh, designated wine areas. I can't remember what the U.S. It's like the, the American version of the... Um, um, the French uh, AOC um, certifications for, for like wine regions, grape growing regions and wine regions. Um, and then uh, we did a California wine country cruise, which was like the San Francisco Bay um, and uh, up the, um, up the uh, Napa River a little ways. Same thing, they'd get off the ship and go visit wineries. Um, and also the Sea of Cortez uh, in Mexico. I did that a couple of winters. That was a lot of fun. A lot of beach time down there. That, that was a lot of... Uh, the Sea of Cortez isn't that big, so basically we would... Um, a lot of the time we would just go someplace and anchor and then um, ferry the passengers ashore in like a in a dib uh, or a rib, a small inflatable boat. Just a lot of trips back and forth, taking passengers and crew and um, and the equipment and food and drink to the beach and back, towing a bunch of kayaks to the beach. Our passengers um, with that company were mostly like age 55 or older and some of them were fairly active but they were pretty expensive cruises so um most like a pretty high percentage of our passengers had um graduate degrees a lot of phds um we also got a lot of people who saved for years to take those trips um and their advantage over the big cruise ships is that we could get into all these small places that the big cruise ships can't. All, almost all of the places that we're stopping on this trip, the big cruise ships can't get into because the waters aren't deep enough for them. Um, where we are right now, uh, this uh, passage, whose name I can't remember and did not note, um, big cruise ships could come up here. But we're going to make some turns in a little bit and go to some places where they wouldn't have any chance of getting into. So, um, that was like, that was what we did. Now the company that I worked for is no longer in existence, but those ships have been purchased by a couple other companies who do more like adventure cruise type stuff. Where they, they bring passengers up here to Southeast Alaska and they go kayaking and um, diving and hiking and stuff, which isn't really the kind of stuff we did. Our, our cruises weren't as active as that. All right, Ragnar, thanks for stopping in and thanks for flying with us. I'll see you next time. Hope you get everything done. Have a good day. Good to see you again. So we just turned around, uh, like made a little bit of a, well, no, we're still on the correct course. This is still Edelin Island on the right. Directly ahead of us, there is an island called Waranofsky Island. It's another one that I don't think has any settlements or anything on it. Probably, there's probably, um, there's probably some, uh, like logging, uh, some logging done on that island, so we fly over it, I bet we'll see some logging roll roads and maybe some clear cuts. Over to the left, that is Zarembo Island. And I, I don't know of anything on Zarembo Island either. There's so many islands up here. They can't all have good places to settle, you know? So 
So we're just going to go up this channel between uh, Warnofsky and Edelin Islands. And then um, come around. Uh, we will fly up over um, those mini mountains ahead of us. Uh, and take a left and uh, come into... Well, actually, no, we don't need to do that. I was thinking of landing at the Wrangell Airport, but... Instead, we can just land out in front of Wrangell on the water because we've got these uh, handy dandy float planes. Oh, hi, boss! You made it back in. I hadn't looked behind in a while. Or the uh, invisibility bug relented. I don't know which it is. realized I had been uh, considering getting my yoke out for the beaver and I didn't uh, be better off landings this way anyways I actually have decent rudder control with the stick Wow, this is one I had timed out pretty well for my planned four-hour stream, I gotta say. I think I'll probably go a little longer. Um, if anybody's still flying with me, but if, uh, if you all need to leave, then... Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go as far as Petersburg today, um, for sure which is just the next stop after Wrangell. It's probably about a, another half hour after Wrangell. And then if people are still flying with me, I will uh, keep going for maybe another hour or so after that. I have, uh, I'm just looking at um, mileages here. Yeah, I think I have a good plan for about an hour after uh, after Petersburg. So, depends. If I don't have anybody flying with me, I'll probably um, hold off and do it to do it tomorrow instead. Or maybe um, I could even do it twice. I kind of want to keep going. So I think what I'm going to do is continue on this. Uh, after Petersburg, um, there will be a little, um, a little flight seeing to do. Um, and if nobody's flying with me, I'll just land back in Petersburg. Or maybe I'll land back in Petersburg anyway and uh, decide tomorrow if I want to do the flight seeing again or if I want to... Um, go straight to what would be the next stop after Petersburg, which is Cake. Yes, the village of Cake. Uh, K-A-K-E. It's a native village. Just a few miles from Petersburg. Probably uh, 20... 25 miles or so as the crow flies, I guess. Alright. Coming down to land. Near Wrangell here. Wrangell? Oh, you know, I just realized I... I gotta be in Petersburg, uh... 
in honor of Ragnar in case he's here tomorrow because uh, he's in Sweden and uh, Petersburg is a very Nordic little town. Anyway, Wrangel is, uh... Is a fun place when you stop on the ferry... At, like, midnight. Um... It's... It's a tradition among at least younger locals. And when I say locals, I mean Petersburg local, locals, really. Um... To, uh... If they're on the ferry south, which, uh the mainline ferry that goes all the way south departs Petersburg. Well, I don't know what it is now, but back in the day it would depart Petersburg around 10 p.m. It would take, um, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half to get to Wrangell. Maybe longer, I don't remember for sure. And the ferry would be docked in Wrangell for maybe 45 minutes to offload passengers and pick up new passengers. And, um, Everybody who was, uh, who was up for it would run off the ferry together and go to the bar. And it was, it would take, uh, probably about 10 to 15 minutes to get to the bar, so you had just enough time to go to the bar, guzzle a beverage of some kind, and then run back to the ferry before it took off. Because the ferry doesn't wait for anybody. If you're not there, you're just stuck until the next one. That was always a lot of fun. So here we are, the town of Wrangell. Um, just uh, one of many logging and fishing towns in Alaska. Although I think it's become more touristy over the last few years. Um, about the time that I stopped working on cruise ships, more of them started coming to Wrangell. I think it was, oh, I think Petersburg, um, where um, a lot of the smaller ones stopped um, because of the Nordic heritage there. Um, and uh, because it was such a charming little town, people loved, the, the tourists always loved it, their stops in Petersburg. Um, everybody loved that town. Um, but they instituted a fee of like, uh, I think like a hundred bucks a head on um, cruise ship passengers. And um, so I think some cruise ships started coming to Wrangell instead because they didn't have that fee. Where is the ferry terminal here? I, I think it's right around here, but just not really represented. But I could be totally wrong. It could be... It could be behind me, around the corner. might be right here. I mean, there's what looks like that breakwater over there, and I think there's supposed to be a marina in there that's just not there. What you doing over there, Pyo Boss? Did you change planes? All right. Have you guys seen enough? I think I'm ready to take off for Petersburg. This will be a fun one. We're going to cruise up the Wrangell Narrows, which is uh, something like 27 miles of... Uh, it's a pretty narrow passage. If you were on a, on a, a ship, like the cruise ships that I worked on, or the Alaska State Ferries, which are the biggest... Um, the biggest boats that can um, navigate the Wrangell Narrows. Um, you you have oh, what is it? I think it's something like seventy navigational turns to make as you um, traverse the Wrangell Narrows. It's uh, I drove one of the boats that I worked on up the Narrows one time, and it was nerve wracking. But it's really scenic. So, departing Wrangell. 
off to our left there's Zarembo Island, or excuse me, um, take a look. Yeah. Just to our left there, like in my view, is Zarembo Island again. So we're going to fly on basically this course, two, I don't know, I'm on 252, 250. This general course for a little bit, um, for a few minutes, and then we're going to turn right and um, join the Wrangell Narrows at, uh, I don't know what that island is. Just the Fourteen Island. I thought I put a waypoint in for this island that I don't know the name of, but I guess I was wrong. So unless something uh, goes wrong, and hopefully it won't, everything's been pretty smooth with the stream tonight, except for some of the stuttering I had back around Misty Fjords. Um, as long as everything goes well, I will be back on at 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. And I might fly late. Um, I'll see how things go. I, I think I'll probably fly late. I think I'll probably start um, with the same flight I'm going to end with tonight, the same flight seeing I'm going to end with tonight, um, and then get going again on our um, trip and head toward cake. So that'll add about an hour at the beginning of the stream, and um, yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. That'll work well. And then I might uh, go a little longer than planned at the end. The only downside to that is that uh, it means we'll reach Skagway. Um, you know, if I do longer streams, it means that we reach, reach Skagway a stream or two earlier than I thought we would. But that's okay. It just means I have to come up with other places to fly. And I do have some ideas, like a short airliner flight from Juneau to Anchorage might be fun and uh, force me to figure out my um, PMDG 736 and then from Anchorage hop back into um, some bush planes for some uh, bush flights around Alaska, around uh, central Alaska, south central Alaska and uh, maybe Prince William Sound. Prince William Sound is beautiful. It's got one of the weirdest towns I've ever been to. forgot after we um once we hit skagway um for one stream or at least as uh, one flight as part of a stream we're gonna come back here to um either petersburg or wrangell and fly up the stikine river um which goes up into um goes up into canada i, I think it's um is it the yukon up here i think and um that's a that's a fun trip uh, fun trip that would last i think probably about two hours um 
I'm not positive where I want to go from there. We might just do a trip up there and then uh, spawn back in somewhere else on that stream. Or heck, I could even start with that with that tomorrow. I mean, uh, that could be part of the beginning of the stream tomorrow. I don't know. Do you guys have any input on that? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Oh. <laughs> Here I am trying to uh, fly into the wrong place. It's actually not the first time I've done that. It's kind of embarrassing. I saw a channel and went for it, but that would just we'd cut off, we'd cut across the island and go up a blind slew. If we continued that in that direction. Uh, did we lose Pyo Boss again? Kenzo, what time uh, do you have? Is it like 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock? Okay, if I hug the shore to my right from here, I will not miss the Wrangle Narrows. Six o'clock. Okay, I was off by a little bit. Oh, my water bottle was fully closed. That's embarrassing. Just a little dribble on stream. Felt like it was fully closed. I guess it didn't. It just doesn't seal right. It's all wet, that's not pleasant. You have any plans for the for the evening? Just dinner? In real life, all these uh, cliffs to the right don't exist. The sim just doesn't know how to render them. I think it's mostly um, big trees on a more gentle rise. There are some cliffs, but not quite like that. Cooking dinner right now. Do you know what you're going to have for dinner? I'm starting to get hungry myself.
gonna speed up a little bit till we get to the narrows. Chicken Parmigiana, nice. I made an eggplant Parmigiana maybe a month ago. It was pretty good. It was not my um, wasn't my my best effort when it comes to cooking eggplant, but it was pretty good. Eggplant's one of those things on my list of favorite foods. But that I can't quite nail the cooking of. I've watched YouTube videos about salting it or not salting it. All kinds of other things. And I mean, it's, it's always good when I have it, just not quite what I envision. You know, one thing that would be cool if it was in the uh, sim, especially for a trip like this, is navigational buoys uh, that would be in the water for, uh, for ships. That'd be really cool for this, because... There's a ton of them, and uh, if I had any idea how to do it and any applicable skills, maybe I would create a mesh for this area to include those navigational markers. Somebody did some improvements for the town of Petersburg, um, and I uh, downloaded their uh, mod on a... Um, on, uh, Oh, uh, was it flightsim.to? Um, I wonder if there's a way to contact them through that and see if they have any interest in in that uh, doing a mod to add the navigational markers to that area. That'd be pretty cool, and it'd be a nice touch. little islands are they look really cool when you come through on the ferry especially if it's like four in the morning in may or june when it's like it never really gets fully dark it's like perpetual dusk uh at night and shrouded in in fog it's really um it's really incredible that the alaska state ferries come up this uh, this channel because it gets so narrow at some points and it uh, and it's more narrow the channel itself is more narrow than you can tell by looking at it from the air because the water is just not that deep and there's uh, there are rocks on both sides okay here we go turning up into Wrangell Narrows proper see there'd be buoys right there and um Probably some, probably a range board behind us. Be really cool stuff to add in. get just a little bit higher for a moment. Just point out um, this peak. Um, oh, you can't see my... Yeah. This peak where my cursor is um, now behind my plane. That is uh, Crystal Mountain. 
and that's the highest point on the island. The island Petersburg is on, um, which is the island to our right, is uh, Mitkoff Island. Um, and right there, you see the uh, you see that passage to the right. That is Blind Slough. This is where we would come out if if I had kept going, um, where I accidentally turned in um, over that little channel back around the corner. Yeah, what we're seeing here is um, the Wrangell narrows at high tide, basically. At low tide, there are um, it gets a lot more narrow. Because it's um, so narrow, the tides move really fast here, too. And it has big tides, actually, really big tides. Um, this area gets 25-foot tides. Time to get lower here. Lower and a little slower. If you were here in the summer, you'd see a pretty steady stream of, uh, of fishing boats headed up and down the narrows here. A lot of purse saners, gill nutters. I love flying, uh, flying along the shore here. There's the quarry. It's just the quarry as it's known in town. Unintentional. And these, these cliffs don't really exist here. There are some smaller drop-offs, but not quite like this. Not as extensive as these. Oh, shoot. Is that what I think it was? I'm going to circle around here and have a closer look. I believe right ahead of me here is this. Oh, that's... I'm not trying to crash. I promise. Can't tell if that was just rendered differently from from up there. Hmm. Well, well, I'm just gonna keep going. I think that was the Beachcomber Inn we just passed. Which, um, for a long time was a, uh, rent-by-the-month kind of hotel where a lot of itinerant workers, seasonal workers, would stay. Um, they had a restaurant, uh, which they opened once a year to be able to keep their liquor license. That was the stipulation to keep the liquor license for the place. They had to be open at least one day a year. And the day they chose to open was the 4th of July. Of course, our Independence Day here. 
and uh, it was always a huge party. There were fireworks in town um, shot off over the water for the 4th of July, but um, the beachcomber also had fireworks. Uh, but I think they did them the day before, so you didn't have to choose on the 4th, you didn't have to choose which fireworks you would uh, you would watch. No, I was wrong. That was the beachcomber that we just passed. Oh well. It's hard to tell because um, none of these uh, places, you know, look exactly like they do in real life. The the sim just places buildings of the of more or less the appropriate shape in their places. So that's like that's one thing that the uh, Petersburg improvements um, mod that I installed does is it makes the buildings look more like they do in the real town but it also fixes some problems with the docks before i had this this mod installed the docks only had um like a hundred of the same like speedboat docked there and um it's not that kind of place it's a fishing town so what you see at the docks is a bunch of fishing boats uh, you don't see a bunch of like fast looking speed boats and uh it, it made some other cool changes too there's there's a few canneries in town and it it um made them a little more true to life uh we're gonna we're gonna fly over the first of the canneries in a little bit here And there it is, this big building out on the water here. This is the um, Nelbro can cannery. You can see there's a f even a fishing boat at the docks. And before I installed this mod, none of these fishing boats existed. And some of them, like there's a bunch of them that all have the... So that's at the Petersburg um, Shipwrights, that fishing boat that we just passed. And this is um, the South Harbor, and, the, and that's the fuel dock on the right. This is the South Harbor followed by the middle harbor and this I'm gonna slowly circle over or circle around this one look at these it has like it has purse saners that weren't here that aren't here by default it's great all right in order to see what I want to see I'm gonna fly in this direction for a minute um, right here um, this little mini mountain I'm flying toward this is Petersburg Mountain and um, this valley over here, flowing through this valley, is Petersburg Creek. And then the mountain I'm headed toward now is called Five Finger. Which, let's see if you can, if we can tell in the sim. You can kind of see why it's called Five Finger there. Just the um, shape of the, uh, of the peak. Um, a lot of people go up Petersburg Creek to go fishing um, or hiking. It's a good place to run into bears if you're into that. Alright. It's the best way for me to do this in the float plane. So, this dock, uh, if I wasn't in the float plane, I'd just land on it. But I'm flying straight toward. This is the longest dock in town like the longest wharf type dock in town. This is the Ocean Beauty Cannery. Well, the former Ocean Beauty Cannery that I just flew over. And that's where I worked um, my first three summers up there. Now I am flying over PFI, Petersburg Fisheries, which is an icicle Oh no, I'm sorry, I just flew back over Ocean Beauty and it realized I'd done a complete 180. Well, there are three canneries right downtown here. And I think I'm gonna land here. And uh, Kenzo, I'm gonna do one more 
flight that'll probably be about an hour long. It sounds like you're probably going to have to go eat your food. You're welcome to join again if you'd like. Otherwise, I will see you... Um, or welcome to hang with me until you have to leave, I guess. I'm going too fast to land in that direction. Ooh, I didn't hit anything. So this is um, PFI off to my right. Petersburg Fisheries. It's an icicle-owned cannery. I didn't know that I was going to actually, like, come around here, but... Um, right in front of me is a small park called Eagle's Roost. And in the summer, there are usually a lot of bald eagles uh, flying around here. Bald eagles and seagulls. Um, and a lot of people uh, come here on their lunch breaks and stuff and, uh, and just watch the eagles. Oh, this is cool to get this, this view of these places. Alright, I'm gonna get back up into the air. Uh, no wonder I was going so fast, I landed with no flaps. I think uh, the people... Of... Why is there so much drag? I bet my landing gear are extended. Yep, my landing gear were extended. That's more like it. Actually getting some speed. I'm just gonna fly over part of the island here. Fly kind of uh, by the uh, airport. awesome mine. Oh yeah, you don't have the, uh, that's right, you don't have the mod that I have. So if you're, uh, yeah, I thought, I thought you'd probably end there. I'm just gonna fly for probably another hour tonight, unless, unless other people show up to fly. I might go longer, but, uh, I think that's probably unlikely, so I'm gonna go for about another hour and see, um, See if anybody pops in or, or if you come back. This is just going to be scenic flight seeing and I'm going to come back here to Petersburg. And then I think I'm going to do um, a similar thing at the start of stream tomorrow. So, um, although I will be live earlier tomorrow, um, starting around 5 my time, which, um, let's see, uh, so I think you're 17 hours ahead of me. Is that right? It's 1 a.m. here now. So, oh, hey, Vampy. I'm on uh, West USA. You came in at a good time for some uh, for some good scenery. I'm in the beaver here. I hope it, you'll want a plane that can climb a little bit, and I hope this. I hope the beaver can manage it. <laughs> and uh, if it helps you find me at all, um, P A P G. Uh, Papa Alpha Papa Gulf is the airport that I'm near. Cheers, Kenzo. Thanks for joining. It was fun flying with you again. I'm going to do something I almost never do and land a float plane on a runway. I have a feeling I'll wish that I just landed on the water. Yeah. Especially considering um, how high and fast I'm coming in. Yeah, 
<laughs> Those happy lights look like they're uh, flashing a stern warning at me about being too high. Oh, there we go. I think I finally got a red. No, just my imagination. I should verify that my landing gear are down. Yep. All right. Should. Uh... Oh, that was not bad. I mean, it was a little hard. Oh, look, there's somebody here. I love it. It's not somebody, is it? It's just a plane. I love coming and seeing what planes the sim places here. Look, it's JetBlue. JetBlue doesn't come here. My favorite uh, plane that I've seen uh, that I've seen here at the Petersburg Airport was a um, uh, shoot, what's it called? Uh, Light chair. It was, it's Ch Chair Airlines or something like that. It's a Swiss carrier. I had to look it up. Um, that, of course, doesn't actually come here. Um, is that you, Vampy? Oh. You, oh. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to duck out and grab a different plane. Um, because I think I'll be more comfortable in, uh, I think I'll be more comfortable in something else. So, I'm going to duck out and, um, grab the Savage Carbon. Uh, since, um, we're going to sort of do a circle and come back here to Petersburg, or at least that's the plan. Um... And, uh, I won't have need floats, so I, I hope you didn't, uh, grab a float plane just because I had one. I need to figure out how to um, interface um, this uh, Fly Live Studio with my chat bot, um, and add, I should probably just ask uh, We Fly about that. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Um, I gotta find a way. I gotta figure out how to interface those two so I can just add the info command and make it easy for people who want to join. Alright, here we go. You're gonna blow me away in that F-22. flight-seeing trip I'm going to do here out of Petersburg, Alaska. It's uh, Papa Alpha, Papa Gulf, if you want to 
jump in. Now, you know, I'm not real big on the fighter jets, Vampy. Um, I, I think that, uh, I think they're kind of fun, but it's not the, uh, it's not the kind of flying I really enjoy. I didn't realize that there was a free one, freeware F-22, though, so maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll have to pick it up. Yeah, that's a good point. It's, uh, pretty loud for me, too. that I don't want to hear it at all, it's that it's super loud. Alright, there you go, uh... Bush flyers, if you um, if you're able and want to join, um, we're on the West USA server, and that is the uh, nearest airport. It's Petersburg. Uh, James was it James A. Johnson International Airport that we just departed from. It's going to be a scenic flight. Ampy, uh, who is that, um, who's that freeware F-22 from? I'll check it out. Sometime when I'm in the mood for that kind of plane. Bush Flyers, if you um, haven't uh, spawned in yet, I should say that you'll want a plane that can climb a little bit. It's part of the reason why I went out and grabbed the Savage Carbon, because I know it can do it. Top Mock Studios? It's, I don't know why, but that name makes me chuckle a little bit. I think it, um, I have a suspicion that it's a play on the words top notch, or on the phrase top notch. Instead of top notch studios, we got top mock studios. Like, a mashup of top notch and top mock, like, to mock something up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know what that mock is, but, um... I think it's just some clever wordplay. It tickles my brain a little bit. That's really what I'm trying to say. I like that stuff a lot better than puns, personally.
So we are about to turn left here and head up Lacant Bay, or in local Southeast Alaska parlance, Lacanti Bay. Um, oh, did it really? <laughs> My mind didn't go to the gutter at all. Anyway, we're gonna head up Lacant Bay here, which is, uh, I think it's about a seven mile fjord, um, terminating in uh, Lacant Glacier, which is the southernmost tidewater glacier in the northern hemisphere, I believe. Oh wow, I think if this is the first time in over four hours that that uh, announcement triggered. At least it's the first time I've seen it. It's possible I just didn't notice it. Anyway, the um, Vampy, when I saw your plane before I realized it was the F-22, um, I kind of chuckled to myself because uh, to me it looks like an airliner because since I don't have the F-22 and um, I was once on a flight on a, on a 737, an Alaska Airlines 737 that um, went up this fjord at a, probably about a thousand feet um, lower than all the mountain tops that we can see here and um, just because uh it was on the mail or on the uh, milk run from um, Juneau down to Seattle, which stops in Petersburg, Wrangell, and Ketchikan on the way. And they got as they departed Petersburg, they got word of um, they got word of some cargo they had to pick up in Wrangell that apparently it was going to add so much weight that they had to burn fuel on the way to Wrangell. So they decided to take the scenic route, and um, they they made an announcement about it, but they didn't say where they were going to go, and everybody on board, at least all the locals, were shocked when they traveled up Lakani Bay here in a 737. <laughs> it was the most interesting flight-seeing trip I've ever been on. Only in Alaska. Vampy, how slow can that thing go? That's one thing that I that I wish was somehow available in the sim is uh, other simmers speeds. On the, on the small cruise ships I used to work on, we would come up here. We'd just come up here and sit by the face of the glacier and, uh... Oh wow, that's not bad at all. I never would have guessed it could go that slow. Yeah, we'd come up here to sit off the face of the glacier, at least a quarter mile off, and uh, just wait to see if it calved. It'd be cool if um, the sim would add icebergs, because there'd be lots of small bits of ice here. Even, like, it's amazing how realistic this image of the glacier's face is. Like, the rocks on either side um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, the rocks on either side here are, look pretty much exactly like they do in real life. This is a glacier that has um, been going back and forth between retreating and, um, and advancing. Uh, for a few years, um, they thought it was in catastrophic retreat, 
And now I think it, um, I think it's been advancing again for a few years. So we're just gonna, um, we're gonna fly up the glacier to the left here. I'm gonna get a little lower, though, before I start to gain altitude. Color is a little bit off on the ice here. It should be a little less green and a little more blue. Unless my, uh, I don't know, my, the last time I was here, I think it rendered as more blue. Alright. Here we go. This is where my plane needs to be able to climb. Although it's gonna get harder than this. I guess this is nothing. I can still gain speed at this uh, at this rate. Turn right here. Follow that uh, branch of the glacier up. Did you land or crash, Vampy? I guess since I'm in a bush plane, I may as well land. Oh, really? Yeah, I've, I've thought about uh, liveries too, but. I did a little bit of googling one day and I read a few things and it didn't seem uh, uh, it seemed like it was going to require more in-depth research than I was able to give it at the time so I decided to sort of um, shelve it until a later date when I could give it better attention I mean I've I had enough uh, going on with, like, figuring out how to do this streaming shit, you know? And that, I'm just trying to, uh... I'm just trying to add a little bit more to each stream. Sort of, uh, approach it with the baby steps method. Improve it a little. Every time I stream, I just make it a little bit better. I mean, I finally learned some of the chat commands and added some commands to my um, stream elements bot and stuff. Such a nice rate of descent, and then somehow bit it at the very end there. <laughs> nice views up here. I guess technically if I wanted to land on a glacier, I should have put some skis on a plane, but... 
I just wanted to come up in a plane that I knew. All right, here we go. Back in the air. Back. Oh, I put the. I don't remember putting the uh, parking brake on, but apparently I did. time for me to go up, up, up. I need to get to about 9,500 feet here. Oh, nice. That's got to really take some serious, uh, serious attention. Uh, satisfy my curiosity and see what we get here in live weather. not as bad as I thought it would be. Alright, 9,500 feet. 96, we will try to stay around here. We'll wind up here now. I out of the weather. It's howling. Try not to crash into any mountains here. So this is, um... Right now we are, uh, on the American side of the Alaska Coastal Range. And um, we're flying into a region known as the Border Peaks. And it's a series of peaks that, um, as the name might suggest, mark the border um, between the US and Canada. We're just gonna fly to two of the peaks. able to land at one of them too. 
Or at least I might be able to. Well, yeah, I guess you'll be able to land there for sure, Vampy. I only ended up all the way at over 10,000 feet. Oh, I didn't realize the turbulence I was hitting until I got into the cockpit. Funny, with my headphones on, it sounds like a tin can in here. Okay, so this peak right here that I am, uh, that's right next to me. This is Kate's Needle. How far back are you, Vampy? I turned on landmarks in the assistance settings and I thought that it would show the, the peaks, but uh, apparently not. This is an instance where I wish that my um, user waypoints I um, set up in Navigraph would show up in the sim. Looking at the mountains in this in this sim. Oh, uh, that looks intimidating since I lost a little bit of altitude and turned around to come back at it. I'm gonna make one more pass here and then turn to the right. Uh, we're gonna fly a heading of about 022 from here. Track 268. No wonder I was confused. I was like, I see where we're going. There we go. causing me some anxiety thanks to my fear of heights. But I'm gonna look some more. Look at that. Kinda hard to fly with this orientation though. There's a weird bit of scenery below me that almost looks like an ice wall. It's like the, um, it's like we were sent to the, uh, the Black, uh, what's it called, the Black Watch, the, the Night's Watch, in, um, Game of Thrones. Nine plus G. <laughs> Obviously have the G suit on in there, so you're not passing out constantly. My 
pilot's just some dude. He might be a flight school dropout, I'm not sure. Looks like MacGyver. funny, you know, this, the, this weird structure thing below me almost looks like it's the game putting a physical representation of the border in or something. That's sad, excuse me. Because it goes, like, straight between these two peaks that are both border peaks. So this other peak that I'm uh, that I'm approaching here is called Devil's Thumb. It's very recognizable from uh, Petersburg, where we just uh, departed before coming out here. Um, it's uh, uh, it doesn't in the sim it doesn't show it doesn't stick up quite as far as it does in real life, and I don't know if it's like the. Um, I don't know if it's just the behavior of the horizon in the sim or what, but from in the sim you can barely pick it out from town, but in real life it has a, a very distinct shape. Uh, there's no there's no missing it. And on um, summer solstice, the sun basically rises behind it, circles all the way around, and then sets behind it. That doesn't make any sense. It would be both rising and setting in the east. But for some reason it feels like it was true. Okay, can I land somewhere near the peak here? I did it once, but not in this kind of weather. I think I landed over around this side. Ooh, the wind. Love it. Just don't smash me into the mountain. I don't know how I managed to land over here before. It looks a lot harder with all this snow. It's weird, it's like it's a dragon's spine. And then it goes off in this direction toward... I don't know what that peak is. Oh, that must be um, Mount Rats or whatever it's called. Is that on the... I don't think it's in Navigraph. It goes str straight over to this... Yeah, it's weird, but it, it literally goes between the border peaks. Because this... Um, this other mountain I'm headed toward now is, it's called Mount Rats or something like that. And it's the, it's like the next border peak in the line. Weird. Alright, I'm gonna take one more pass around, um, oh, that is a huge open field of ice down there. I'm gonna take one more pass by Devil's Thumb just because I love it. And then I'm gonna dive, dive, dive to the glacier down there. Um, this, uh, this peak features in some of, um, John Krakauer's stuff. Uh, in, um, he mentions it in Into the Wild, where he stops in Petersburg. Um, and, uh, he actually talks about it in the context of, um, a camping trip. Like, he did a, uh, you know, a climbing trip that he had done. I think he, I think the story was he had 
he came here to, um, I don't know if he was going to climb Devil's Thumb, which people do, um, um, but he borrowed his, his dad's tent, I think, and maybe some of his dad's other gear, and he, he camped, um, over by the shore, and he was smoking a joint and, uh, lit his dad's tent on fire. <laughs> Um, but, uh, what was his other book? It was, was it Into the Cold? I think that had more details on that trip. I think that was a, I think that was a book about, um, climbing. But, uh, he, um, he wrote for, um, was it Outside Magazine or Out Outdoors Magazine or something? And that's actually when he, um, started writing the story for Into the Wild. It was while, I think that began as a series for the magazine he was working for. Alright, Departing Devil's Thumb. I love this scenery, it's like otherworldly up here. And this is a great little descent just controlled by my flaps. I mean, I'm, my vertical speed is like 4,000 feet, but my airspeed is only 95 or so. I think we go left. Just gonna kind of ride this glacier down. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, I was thinking about going a little longer after we get back to Petersburg, but I'm getting pretty hungry, so I think it's time for me to end the stream when we get back there. It'll be a pretty good, like five plus hour stream. we do want to go right. Say for sure. Yeah, I think right is the way to go. How was your day, Vampy? Did you do anything fun? Or how is your day? I guess I don't know what part of the world you're in, or I don't remember. But you're not in the States, are you? Oh, you are in the States. Louisiana, huh? I've, uh... I've only been to Louisiana once, even though I have family who've lived there my whole life. Um, aunt and uncle couple cousins. They live in Baton Rouge, or just outside Baton Rouge in, um, Prairieville. And, uh, the only time I visited was a birthday trip to New Orleans. We slept most of the day. Well, I kind of did, too. Well, no, not really. I guess I was up by noon. I meant to stay in bed till two, but I woke up at about noon and couldn't get back to sleep, so I just gave up. Oh, we could just ride one of these glaciers down, but, uh, I guess I'm gonna hop over these mountains. Yeah, I used to, um, I have a friend who lives in Minneapolis who has the same birthday as me, and we tried to start a birthday tradition of, like, doing a trip every year and, uh, inviting a few of our mutual friends along. That only lasted two years before she got a new job, and, uh, it was too close to our birthdays so she wasn't able to take time off yet at that job and then the next year she planned some other trip I think she went to Ireland or something and uh, so unfortunately it fell apart we only made it to Denver one year and uh, New Orleans the next year but I was glad to make it to New Orleans it was a great trip I spent I think as a group we were there for five days then I went to um, I went and visited my family in Prairieville for for a day and went back to New Orleans for a couple more nights. 
had a blast. I had fun with my friends, but I really had fun by myself. So much good music, so many good bars. Uh, I'm Frenchman. I wasn't a fan of. Uh, I wasn't a fan of Bourbon Street. Too many uh, characters I didn't want to be around. Frenchman was awesome. And actually, I ran into a musician I know. I was walking past a bar on Frenchman, or approaching a bar on Frenchman, and I heard his, his voice. He was singing. I was like, man, that sounds like Andre. And uh, me and my friend got up to the door, and I looked in. And sure enough, it was him, and he looked out at the exact moment that I looked in. And he just stopped. He stopped playing and went, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> pretty funny. That was... I don't know what... Yeah. Yeah, that was the Apple Barrel. I don't know if you know the Apple Barrel. Great little place. I hope it's still open. Apple Barrel was great. God, I can't remember the n names of the other places I really liked along there. We stopped in... There was a bar maybe a half block down that had some really good, uh, really good blues. There was another, like, bigger bar that had three different stages, and, um, they just, like, had acts that rotated stages. Had the best Sazerac of my life at that bar. But I also had the worst Sazerac of my life in New Orleans. <laughs> On my birthday, no less. Our birthday meal was at a restaurant that came very highly recommended, and it was not good. So disappointing. I mean, even the... The... The food was not... Great. The cocktails were not great. The only time in my life I've ever sent a cocktail back. I ordered a Sazerac, and I got the most foul-tasting cocktail I've ever been served. <laughs> I'm not really a complainer. Usually I'm like, it's fine. I can... I can choke it down. But not that one. And the bartender didn't appreciate it either. Oh well. It was still a fun birthday. So we are, um, how nice. Uh, we're cruising down into Thomas Bay right now. Two can play that game, Vampy. I just can't do it quite as well as you. You know what? I've never seen Alaska upside down. Let's check it out. I know if I uh, stay in the cockpit while I'm flying inverted, I'm destined to crash. I know that you think that when there's snow in the scenery, all the water should be frozen, but this is, this right here, this is water that never freezes. Never. In fact, Kenzo, who's parked over there, asked about that earlier. All right, Thomas Bay. Go. I'm just gonna change the weather back off live weather now. 
And in fact, I'm also going to change the time because the one when I from when I first took off, the time only advanced like 15 minutes. And the entire reason I chose the time that I did to leave um, to leave Stewart was because I wanted to be flying for the sunset. So, just advance the time so we can have some sunset before I call it a day. Should be back to Petersburg in what, like five minutes or so? And then I can figure out what to have for my very late night dinner. Probably just be yogurt and something. Yeah, I mean, now that I turned the weather off, it's water, of course, and it's fine, but... I don't know, um... One of the guys who was flying with us earlier, I think it was Ioboss, said that, um, said that he read that the next update is gonna fix the snow problem, like... In the places that have snow, there's often way more snow than there should be. Or, like, in Alaska, if you turn live weather on, a lot of the time it shows snow just because it's Alaska, I guess. At times when there's not actually any snow. Um, so supposedly he read that they're going to fix that in the next update. And I hope they do. I wish they would also fix the... Um, sideways streams problem, or as he called it, the lumpy water. I mean, my, my one of my biggest hopes for um, 2024 is that it fixes the sideways roads in scenery. The sideways roads and the, the cars that drive off the roads and stuff. Yeah, the water hills. The water hills suck. Actually, last night I was flying with, um, with Tony, Sidgy TV. Um, he flew, um, a route that I suggested in Pakistan. And I was, I didn't think I was going to make it because I was actually reinstalling the sim. Um, and my install happened, or finished just in time to join him. He was doing three flights, and I was able to join him for the second flight, and the flight I suggested was the final one, but... It, we found the strangest, um, the strangest, uh, landscape problem, um, which was we were flying in a river valley in the, um, uh, Karakam Mountains, or whatever they're called in Pakistan. They're the mountain, it's the mountain range that, um, K2 is in. And we were flying to Skardu, if you know where that is. It's just, like, it's nestled into these, like, tall, tall mountains. Um, but we were doing a, like, low and slow bush flight, um, just up a river valley. And at a certain point, all of a sudden, it was like a hole opened up in front of us. And we were looking through the scenery and there was, like, blue skies and stuff um, with, like, a lid over it. Uh, it was really strange. And you couldn't actually, like, if you flew into it, you crashed. Um, it was like those bridges that don't work that you can't actually fly under and uh um it was really weird it it was it seemed like the satellite imagery had a problem like uh telling the difference between the river and something else oh you were yeah you might have seen it it happened a number of times but like the first time i was like what the hell was that and then it happened like, I, I saw it, I think, once when I did that flight by myself. And it just happened over and over. And uh, it was so weird. And I, I assume that was, like, the, um, like, satellite imagery having trouble interpreting the elevation data or something.
not going to bother lining up for this run. I'm just going to dive onto it at the last second. Now I think I advanced the time to the exact right spot. The mountains look pretty nice in the sunlight. So I take it you're a night owl like me, Vampy. ideal uh, sleep schedule is like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now that I'm not a bartender though, it's uh, not as easy to actually keep those hours. Runway there, two three. I said I wasn't going to line up for the runway, and now look at me. Oh, uh, no worries. I just, I just uh, said, what's the runway there? Two, three. Oh, about sleep? I asked, I asked if you're a, a night owl like me, because you're up pretty late. It's, what, 4 a.m. for you? And I said, uh, my preferred sleep schedule, my ideal sleep schedule is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's just when I feel the best and I'm the most creative. Ugh. I should really pay attention and get onto the runway. Instead of looking at other stuff. Oh, no wonder I'm having problems. I have flaps out. Ha. It's like, why is it so much work to get this plane to uh, go down instead of up? Because I'm a moron, that's why. Yes, uh, I was a bartender for most of the last ten years, and that sleep schedule worked great for that, but uh, I'm not bartending anymore, it's a little tougher. Uh, stop it, you didn't actually lose the connection, you just think you did. Can I float some more, please? <laughs> the answer is yes. Oof. Float and bounce. I think that's going to be my stream title from now on. Float and bounce. Maybe I should just... Yes, yes. That's what that was. It happened at a bad time, though. Right when I was about to touch down, it, uh... It caused the game to stutter, the sim to stutter. Ugh. Damn it. I'm just gonna go over there and park. gonna drive through you to do it though apparently don't uh
Don't ingest me, please. I hate taxiing in this plane. Yeah, you, you can send me a link, or I can, I'm sure I can find it by searching for it. Top, top Mock Studios or whatever. Oh, I just... Just about broke through the fence here and left the airport. F-22 Tokyo Drift, alright, got it. I'll just, uh, find it as soon as I'm off here so I don't forget about it. Maybe I'll play with it a little bit tomorrow. In the meantime, what is this airport vehicle doing here at this time of night? This would not happen in Petersburg. Get out of my way. Alright, that'll work for a place to park. Until uh, Alaska Airlines... Oh, okay. oh gotcha. <laughs> This will work for a place to park until Alaska Airlines Flight 65 comes in tomorrow. They won't be happy that I'm here. F-22 Raptor. Alright. Boom. Boom. Uh, where's the avionics switch in this thing? You know what? Engine's off, the cockpit's dark. That's good enough for me. Alright. Thanks, uh, thanks Vampy for coming in and flying a little bit. It was nice to see you here. Thanks to, uh, Hyo Boss, Kenzo, and Ragnar also for coming in and flying for a while. Anybody else who's, uh, still here um thanks for hanging around and lurking if you came in with the raid um i th think i think what we're gonna do i think we're gonna raid um he's not playing flight sim right now what is this Oh, I know who we'll go to. Um, yeah, we're gonna go in, uh, we're gonna go raid We Fly Daily. He's playing Shredders, I don't know what that is. But, uh, we'll go harass him a little bit. Yeah, the, um, straight takeoff and landing stuff, I mean, uh, this is, this is really my only plane for that. I, my next purchase, I plan to be the Kit Fox, um, just because it, the um, that package uh, Kit Fox from uh, Parallel 42 or whatever gets such raid reviews, you know? Um, other than that, I'm not sure uh, what else I'll be looking at. Um, yeah. Uh, if you have any other recommendations besides the F-22, let me know. Uh, you can join my Discord. Um, you can, uh, in fact, did I make a, a command for that? There we go. You can join my Discord if you want and uh, let me know about planes there or in whatever stream. Um, anyways, we're going to head over to We Fly Daily. Cool guy. Vampy knows him. Uh, everybody uh, say hi and be cool. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us here. RPG!